Megan Fox. Yeah, Megan Fox has the story. Megan Fox. Megan Fox. Megan Fox writes at PJ Media. Each Tucker. Damn it. Man. <laughs> I cried for two days. <laughs> Megan, thank you very much for that. So, um, <laughs> I can, I can explain the bed thing. <laughs> if you don't show up and vote, up your ass. It's like Jesus going into the temple. He's like, I got a whip. Get out. Get, Get out. out. The lovely and wonderful Megan Fox. Not that hey. one. Not that one. <laughs> Not the weird one that drinks blood in his toe thumb. Megan Fox. Megan. And honestly, Megan, if you don't like it, I'm sorry. She's the devil. Megan. Megan Fox. Megan. Megan. Megan Fox. I've been very nice to you, although I could probably maybe not be based on the way you have treated me, but I wouldn't do that. You've never met a like me. You want to tangle? You want to go? Holy, holy sh- too much cussing on this. I guess we didn't bleep it, so we got to turn it off. But I just, it's just, it's. it's you pissed off the wrong woman. Oh my God! I have been a soap when Megan Fox runs wild on you, brother. She's the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Not for publication. <laughs> the story. I'm Megan. 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 Megan Fox. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. Mm. <laughs> Dropping bombs on your new Mic drop, fiddle alongs While they press snooze Mainstream spinning But I won't play that game A nuclear flow Turning that you for motivational flame Megan Fox crushing all the talking heads As they spoon feed their paid piggies Gotta keep them misled With blazing Lego vision I see it all the time Exposed in the agenda Miss these epic rhymes it's Intellectual on the soul On the mainstream Can burn water, but I'm spitting facts. Top shelf, sorting max facts, reporting news, and not like you make it. I'm award winning, and I don't have to fake it. Megan Fox, an authentic voice, giving the masses a hard hit choice. That umbrella guy, hammering his song, while Megan Fox writes those wrongs. Now we hit the end of this tune. Thing you never knew By the time I press singular a proof Break the stories while you're chasing hunches I'm a news titan Never pulling punches
All right, how about now? How about now? If this doesn't work, I'm in trouble. All right, how about now? Oh, it works. Okay, thank God. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if I played the intro again? <laughs> Should we intro it again? One more time. <laughs> All right, what I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted by tech problems was that I'm sorry that I was uh, late today, but I, my daughter's having a hard time getting over her the last flu that she had. And um, so I had to take her to the doctor. Anyway, uh, yeah, I think we need an, I think we need the intro again. I, I feel like we're <laughs> we I feel like we can't really start on that note. I I, I say I say we play it again. Dropping bombs on your news. Might drop in the lungs by the press news. Mainstream spinning. But I won't play that game. A nuclear flow turning at you for motivational flame. Megan Fox crushing all the talking heads as they spoon feed their paid piggies. Gotta keep them misled. With blazing Lego vision, I see it all the signs. Exposed in the agenda. Miss these epic rhymes. Intellectual assault on the mainstream. Can burn water, but I'm spitting facts. Top shelf, soy max facts, reporting news, and not like you make it. I'm award winning, and I don't have to fake it. Megan Fox, an authentic voice, giving the masses a hard hitting choice. That umbrella guy, hammering his song, while Megan Fox writes those wrongs. Now we hit the end of this tune, declaring war. Then you never knew By the time I press Singulars are through Break your stories while you're chasing hunches I'm a new titan Never pulling punches All right, now we can really start the show. I'm Megan Fox. Welcome back to the program. Sorry I'm late today. Uh, I am here for all your medium smart opinions on everything. And this morning we woke up to an absolute disaster in Maryland. I was, oh my God, at 7 a.m. calling my, my sister, calling my brother-in-law. Please tell me you weren't on that bridge. Uh, so they weren't, by the way. They were sleeping, tucked safe in their beds. But the Francis Scott Key Bridge has collapsed. Uh, after being hit in a freak accident by a shipping container uh, boat. And it was some, I'm sure you've seen it. It's all over on Twitter. But um, here's the thing. If you want good coverage on that, you need to watch Jeff's stream on Legal Vices from earlier this morning. Uh, prayers for everyone, of course. But absolutely, please watch Jeff's coverage of that. Jeff is a maritime attorney. He knows about these things. And please do not spread or entertain the ridiculous conspiracy theories that are already popping up when the, you know, the hell? What is going on with my Wi-Fi today? Is this a Wi-Fi pro? I know. Am I back? I'm, this is, should I just give up now? Should we do another intro? Should we try? Should we? All right. Anyway, uh, if you want to see the coverage, good information on this, go to Legal Vices, watch his stream from earlier today. He has a lot of uh, very good information on that. Uh, thank you, Femme Natale, for saying my hair looks amazing. I uh, spent some time straightening it out this morning. I can't, all of you who keep saying plug your stuff directly into the router modem have no idea how my house is set up and it is not possible. I'm sorry, it is not possible. The best I can do is plug directly into a booster, which is what I have done. And there's nothing else I can do about it. Now, make sure you hit that like and subscribe as you enter this chat. There are 600 of you here. Today, we are going to be talking about uh, Ruby Frankie and hell is not hot enough for what Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildenbrand did to Ruby Frankie's children. And we have, um, yeah, 
Yeah, I know. I could wire it through the walls and stuff, but then we have to open up walls. Mr. Fox already said no, he's not doing it. So it's a no-go. It's a no-go. I would have to run cable through the walls. And like, there's, a, there's so many other things to do here. If I give my husband one more job to do that revolves around this stream, like he's just going to take my computer and throw it in the garbage. So, so please, <laughs> we can't give him any more jobs to do around this stream. We just need to pretend like none of this is happening and everything's fine. There's nothing to see here. I can't move the office. Everyone just quit trying to solve this problem. I have solved it as, as much as it's going to be solved. Okay. Just, I live in the country. There's no good Wi-Fi out here. Just deal with it. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop looking at the chat because you are distracting me from the topic at hand and we need to get through some stuff. Uh, Sarah, move, change that time to one o'clock. It's going to take me a half an hour to get through the documents I need to get through at least. Um, and then we're going to do you and I, Sarah Adams is going to jump on here with me and we're, she's a behavior analyst. And we're going to talk about the uh, interviews. We're going to watch the interviews together of the new information that came out in the Frankie um, Ruby case, which is all over the place. I'm going to pull it up now, but of course all my windows closed. So now I have to reopen everything that I had open. So the prosecution put out all the evidence. Uh, many of it is heavily, some of it is heavily redacted. Some of it is not. We found out that uh, Ruby Frankie actually had a journal that she was documenting all the things that she did to these children. And it is horrible. Uh, first, I'm going to start with the documents that I have downloaded. We're going to go over those and we'll, we'll end up with the uh, videos. All right, hold on. Oh, did I invite the crew? I did. Okay, I put an invite out there for our favorites that I usually invite. So if they want to join me, they're welcome. All right, we're going to start with the neighbor's affidavit. This case is really sad. By the way, if you have children, you know, who can hear, this is probably not the thing you want them to hear. Um, And I really think that these two did not get enough time after we learned what was done to them. That is the wrong screen, Megan. Hold, please. There we go. All right. This is a voluntary witness statement from Danny Clarkson. On Wednesday, August 30th, 2023 at 10 46 a.m our doorbell rang i was slow to answer because i have mobility issues and my wife was in the bathroom when i answered it i saw a young boy who had started to walk away this was startling because our community has no children i called him back and i asked him what was going on he said he needed a favor he asked to be taken to the nearest police station you know what's sad about him saying that his neighborhood has no children is that those children were never seen they weren't seen in the street, riding bikes, playing. They were there, but they weren't seen. The boy was in socks, no shoes, walking on hot asphalt and our long rock driveway. I told him to come sit down on one of our patio chairs by the front door. I sat in the chair beside him, asked him his name, and he said it was R. I asked his age. He said 12. I asked him where he came from, and he said Jody's house. That house is about 100 yards away. R appeared emaciated and malnourished. He also had duct tape around each ankle. I asked him about the duct tape around his ankles, and he said it was personal business, but that it was his fault. Oh, my God. This is terrible. I did not press the issue, but became further alarmed. About that time, my wife, Debbie, came outside. We locked eyes. I told her that R here had been staying at Jody's house. Please bring my phone. Then I asked if he wanted some water or something to eat. He said yes. Debbie ran and brought the phone. She asked R if he had any food allergies and then gave him a bottle of water, an organic pineapple strip, and a banana. At 10.52 a.m., I called 911. I told the dispatcher a 12-year-old boy had just shown up at our door asking for help and stated that he appeared emaciated and malnourished with duct tape around his ankles. I continued to talk to R as the 911 dispatcher started asking me questions or giving me questions to ask him. 
We got his full name as R. Frankie and his age is 12. We began to look at the duct tape around his ankles and we realized there was saran wrap and blood beneath the duct tape. We also discovered he had duct tape around his wrists hidden by long sleeves. And again, he said, I got these wounds because of me. It was obvious to us that he had been in bondage. The dispatcher asked his mother's name. He said Ruby Frankie, but that he didn't know where she was. When asked, R said he had a 10 and 14 year old sister still in Jody's house. Before the ambulance arrived, R reminded us that he had been to our door last Christmas, delivering a gift from Jody. We recalled a woman and several children bringing over a plate of Christmas cookies, and my wife exchanged Christmas treats as well at the time. The woman explained she was a friend of Jody's. At this point, R had consumed the food, so Debbie made him a bag with some small snacks in it. An ambulance arrived at 11.02. That was pretty fast. He called them at 10.52. 11.02 a.m., the EMTs immediately ascertained that the duct tape covered deep wounds and they ceased cutting the tape off. According to the, according to the EMT workers, they ceased cutting it off because it was peeling off his skin. They thought at first the skin, I mean, they thought that it was tape, but it wasn't tape. It was his skin. When he asked how he got them, he said rope. The wounds were the same on both ankles and wrists. The EMTs asked him to walk to the ambulance because they needed to treat him in there. The police officer wanted to carry him, but R was determined to walk. Aww. Debbie gave him her sandals so he could walk across our sharp driveway rocks. The ambulance didn't move for about a half an hour and then left for the hospital. The first policeman arrived simultaneously with the ambulance. He observed R's wounds and heard R say rope had caused them. He gently asked R a few more questions, got his mother's name as Ruby Frankie, home in Springfield, Springville. He then stepped away to communicate within to communicate. Within minutes, things began to happen fast. He told us the police were all responding to this one. Numerous police vehicles quickly arrived. It was obvious that police took R and his sister's situation extremely seriously. Well, it's about time. They had only had 13 or 14 calls before this. We advised them that we thought Jody's house had a full basement with a panic safe room. Oh, and that panic room is so weird. Wait till we get to it. We have a video of R's arrival and several, oh no. Yeah, a video of R's arrival and several minutes thereafter on our ring doorbell system. Okay, that's that one. So we're through the neighbor's affidavit. There's another affida uh, neighbor's affidavit as well. Let me get over to that one. Hold, please. I have to take this call.
No, it's not hangry. <laughs> Hold on. No, so we had, uh, there's so much going on today. So I have well water and the well bladder is overflowing. And so I had to call the mechanic guy to come and fix it. That was them. So I just had to tell them what to do. Anyway, all right, never mind. It is a disaster day. It's one of those days. I had to turn the water off. The, the well's overflowing. And like, it, it's just, it's just, and then why is it when you tell people, like, I really can't talk. You need to call my husband that they keep talking. <laughs> like, don't ask me these questions about what is the problem and is it doing this and what pipe is going in where? I don't know. Just I, I don't know. I just, I was told to call you and tell you to come and fix the thing. I can't tell you any of the things that are actually going wrong. Uh, it's just, it's just a, should I just quit today? Should, should I just give up? I feel like today is a bust. All right. Anyway, here's the second affidavit. This is by another neighbor, Ariel Valley. Um, oops. Whoops. Who knew that the, uh, Space bar did that. Upon returning from work, I noticed police activity on something court. Found out later on media about the arrest of Jody Hill Hildenbrandt and Ruby Frankie. I checked my home security videos the next day and saw that R came to my front door. The time was 11.37 a.m. Sadly, we were not home to help. Not sure if this is What is that word? Something to the investigation. Not sure if this is relevant to the investigation, but we wanted to pass it along. Video to follow by email. R rang the doorbell, but found no one home. He was wearing a long sleeve blue shirt, shorts and socks, and no shoes. Wounds are visible on his legs. His ankles appear to have some type of wrapping and he left at 11.39. I live with, oh, and then this is another statement. I live with Ariel, and I sent text messages to both neighbors upon return home from work and seeing the police activity on the street. Jody was one of those neighbors. I was simply confirming if they were safe. I did not get a response from Jody. Dang. All right, so... Let's go to the next one. Here we have a probable cause statement. Now a probable cause statement is an arrest warrant. This is for Jody. Aggravated child abuse. Arrest narrative report. Uh, blah, blah, blah. On August 30th, 2023, Jody Hildenbrandt was placed under arrest for the following. One, child abuse. Child one climbed out of the window of an Ivan's residence belonging to Jody Hildenbrandt and ran to a neighbor's home. Child one knocked on the door requesting food and water. The neighbor observed duct tape on child one's ankles and wrists and contacted law enforcement. Upon arrival, law enforcement observed the wounds and the malnourishment of child one to be severe, and he was transported to the St. George Regional Hospital. Child one was placed on a medical hold due to his deep lacerations from being tied up with rope and from his malnourishment. Jody Hildenbrandt was found to be in direct care of child one as he was staying at her home. In Jody Hildenbrandt's bathroom, I located gauze which had been used. This observation adds to Ms. Hildebrandt's knowledge of the abuse in the home. Ms. Hildebrandt requested a lawyer and did not speak with us. Once given her charges, Ms. Hildebrandt informed me child two and child one should never be allowed around any other kids. With this information and the belief that Ms. Hildenbrandt had knowledge of malnourishment, abuse, and neglect, this charge will be enhanced to a second-degree felony. I ask that Ms. Hildebrandt not be allowed bail due to the severity of the injuries and the fact that DCFS has taken four of Ms. Frankie's children into their custody, and I have yet to speak with two of them. Is there any reason why this shouldn't be first-degree child abuse, first-degree felony? I'm going to have to look that up in Utah. Like, what, what is the difference between second-degree and first-degree felony child abuse? Utah, first-degree... Felony child abuse. Uh, 
Hmm. Not getting an immediate answer. Okay, so child abuse is a felony when a serious injury is inflicted intentionally, which is a second degree felony. It looks like they don't have a first degree felony charge for child abuse unless it is of a SA nature. That is first degree. Yep. Thank you, James. I'm just discovering that. All right. Uh, child wanted to be severe. So he was transported to St. George Regional. Child one was placed on a medical hold due to the de deep lacerations from being tied up. Oh, I already read this part. Two, child abuse. Victim child two was found at Jody Hillenbrandt's residence after child one made contact with the police. Child two was found to be malnourished and initially refused medical. After approximately four hours, child two agreed to medical treatment. Paramedics arrived and transported child two to the hospital where she was determined to be malnourished by medical professionals. Jody Hillenbrandt was found to be in the direct care of child two. They forgot to redact that once given her charges. Ms. Hildenbrandt informed me that child two and child one should never be allowed around any other kids. With this information and the belief that Ms. Hildenbrandt had knowledge of malnourishment, abuse, and neglect, this charge will be enhanced to a second-degree felony. I ask that Ms. Heldenbrandt not be allowed bail due to the severity of the injuries and that DCFS has taken four of Ms. Frankie's children into their custody and I have yet to speak with two of them. Signed, Jay Bate, the arresting officer's signature. <sighs> this just gets worse and worse. All right, let's go back. I have to go to the prosecutor page again because I didn't download all these documents. I documented, I downloaded what I could. All right, so we now have the Frankie, Frankie, Ruby Frankie arrest affidavit. Is something wrong with StreamYard? That's weird. So I know there's a couple of super chats, but I'm not seeing them highlighted on StreamYard. That's weird. Hang on one second. Let me go into the studio and make sure I'm not missing anything. Because I saw them. Maybe that was before I rebooted. Maybe something. Oh, that's probably what happened. I bet they were in there. So if you sent a super chat in the beginning of this show, I had to reboot and go back out and come back in. And so it won't be on my stream yard, but I can go into the studio and let me go in there and read them real quick. So I don't lose them totally. Hang on one second. Hold please. Okay, here we go. Janice Baldwin, welcome to the Fox Den. Thanks for being here. Janice Baldwin also thanks for the super chat says, hi, Megan, fellow Western New Yorker here. Only seven months though. I love how you educate. P.S. Your hair looked really pretty yesterday. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And thanks for the super chat. Uh, Chaos Coordinator also just sent one that said, I believe in karma and karma is a bitch. We'll find you even after years of hiding from her. And I have a list she missed. Um, you know, this is just, just keep in mind that the two people we're talking about here today only got 15 years that will not be served back to back. It's served all at the same time, 15 years for each charge, which means they could be eligible for parole in four or five years. That's insane. Oh my God. All right. I have to try and get through the rest of these in 15 minutes because I do want to get to the videos. Oops, why does that keep happening? Um, all right, let's get back to the documents. Ruby Frankie's uh, arrest affidavit coming up here right now. And Biggin, aggravated child abuse, arrest narrative report. Same, it's the same officer. Probable cause statement on August 30th, 2023. Ruby Frankie was placed under arrest for the following. 
child abuse. Child one climbed out of window at an Ivan's residence belonging to Jody Hildenbrandt, ran to a neighbor's home. Child one knocked on the door requesting food and water. The neighbor observed. Okay, this seems to be the exact same thing. Placed on medical hold. Uh, Ruby Frankie was seen on a YouTube video filmed in Jody Hildebrandt's downstairs. Wait, that's my camera off center. Uh, filmed in the, the house of Jody. Um, which was posted two days ago. This observation adds to Miss Frankie. Oh, not again. Oh, it's just Walgreens. Never mind. I don't have to answer that. This observation adds to Miss Frankie, the mother of child one, being present in the home and having knowledge of the abuse, malnourishment, and neglect. Miss Frankie requested a lawyer and did not speak with us. With this information and the belief that Miss Frankie had knowledge of malnourishment, abuse, and neglect, this charge will be enhanced to a second degree felony. I ask that Miss Frankie not be allowed bail to the, due to the severity of injuries of her two kids located in the home and the fact that DCF has taken four, four of Miss Frankie's children into their custody and I have yet to speak with two of them. Then the information about child two is the same, same, same. Ruby Frankie was seen on a YouTube video filmed in Jody Hildebrandt's downstairs, which was posted two days ago. Okay, this is the same thing. With this information and the belief that Miss Frankie had knowledge of malnourishment, abuse, and neglect, this charge will be enhanced to a second-degree felony. I ask that Miss Frankie not be allowed bail due to the severity of the injuries and the fact that DCF has taken four of Miss Frankie's children into their custody. I've yet to speak with two of them. And coming to the program now is Mo in the Deep End wearing her Hello. Ca terrifying Karen wig. I know. I feel I feel like the Queen Karen. I feel I had I had to go to Walmart and I felt the desire to argue with someone about a coupon that expired about four years ago <laughs> and to ask for the regional manager. I think it's haunted by the souls of Karens that were scalped. Oh my God. <laughs> the, the Karens that were scalped to make that wig. Just think of the Karens. Think of the Karens, folks. I know. <laughs> Queen of the Karens. Um, by the way, you kind of, this could be a good Jody Hildenbrand wig too. I, I have a better, um, well, Jody's would never be this put together and well, with that's all true. the dimension. But I do have a Jody and Ruby wig. I just, do you? ugh. Well, yeah, she's just, they're both so gross that I'm like, ugh, do I really want to even dress up as them? <laughs> I know, right? It's terrible. Um, I, this whole thing is so bad. All right, let's move on to the next one. What do I have here? Uh, I think I'll save the journal for when Sarah gets here because Sarah's also a handwriting expert, uh, which is going to be oh, pretty interesting because this awesome. journal is, ha is, uh, is handwritten and she does character analysis from handwriting and she's really good. She did mine. Oh, cool. She's really accurate. It's so bizarre. Um, she's, she said things about my handwriting. Mine. She said things about me that I was like, there's no way you could have known that. Like there's just, Oh wow. It was really interesting. So I'm really looking forward to that. She's going to come on in about 10 more minutes. Okay. I just want to get through some of these, um, What's a redacted DIR? Let's find out. I don't know what that means. What's a DIR? I, uh, I know what DIR. a DNR is, but yeah, I don't know what a DIR. Oh, detailed incident report. Yes, that's what oh, we need. Yeah. That would make more sense than a DNR. So <laughs> it would. Go. It would. All right. Let's bring this up on the screen and embiggen. By the way, if you're in my locals a chat, I'm not looking at you right now. I'm not ignoring you, but I, I don't have enough screens to put you up on the screen right now. Also, hello, Rumble. Welcome, Rumble. Uh, I know you're in the rumble ghetto over there, but all right, let's get through this. Washington County attorneys, detailed incident report, nature, child abuse received by Higgins by summer Higgins, how received by telephone. All right. So this is a radio log, just how, when people arrived, when things were completed, we can skip past that. Lots of numbers, phone calls, case history. I mean, I don't know what's in here or if there's going to be anything useful at all. Looks like a bunch of dates of calls, lots of redactions. There are some CIA level redactions in the journals, by the way. So maybe we won't even have anything to read here. Oh, these are items they took from the house. Okay. Ooh. We do want to look at this. Yeah. Um, shit. Did it just jump up? I thought I was at the items. 
It did. It jumped back up. Dang it. Uh, ha, here. Page nine, in case it jumps back up again. All right. Okay. Here's what the property information that they took. Adhesive, tape, saran wrap, miscellaneous papers, book, magazine, journal. Someone spelled journal wrong. Journal. Like a funeral hey, and a journal together. Some of us are grammar and spelling outlaws. <laughs> All right. A, a plastic bowl with red liquid in it. A bandage. Absorbent dre bandage dressing. A another bandage. Two ankle socks. Another bandage. Ankle socks. Oh, dear Jesus. <sighs> Miscellaneous paperwork. Telephone. iPhone characteristics old <laughs> I, a telephone another <laughs> iphone more old it's old with a peach cover telephone iphone old uh type bowl with red liquid metal spoon characteristics old item <clears throat> type rope characteristics old well maybe so, it just means that it's not in package maybe maybe old i don't know mm. I don't know. There's a lot of old shit in here. Book, magazine, wow. small book, journal. Rope, more rope. Jesus, how much rope do you need? Handcuffs. Oh, carab carabiners. carabiners. What are carabiners? They're the, aren't they the things that you use if you were ever graceful enough to rock climb? It's the little right. doodads. Those that you... little hook things. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you wanted to get off God's ground Paper, that he put us on. Saran wrap with bandages, bandages, saran wrap, more saran wrap and bandages. Jesus. Computer, Apple Mac, characteristics old, color silver. Another Apple Mac, also silver, a computer, Apple Mac, three Macs. Okay. Good Lord, she could open her Four own. Max, five Max, long sleeve shirt, clothing socks, ankle socks, clothing underwear, striped, clothing underwear, fruit of the loom, diaper. Mm. Oh, they better not have had them in adult diapers. I'm about ready to. Oh, you don't even know that. Have you read the journal yet? No. Okay, well, it's about I, to, I, it's going to get a, really a bad. Week last week, so I was like, maybe I'll save my rage for when Megan and I to, are together, so that yeah, you're gonna our rage it. can can combine like the Wonder Twins. She mm. claims that her ten, her ten and twelve year old children were still, you know, having incontinence problems, but I, I really that believe it was also... either forced or medical. Like well, I think that can it was either also happen when you're right. being abused, abused. You right, and starved. Imagine they're yeah. they're starving, so their body could be shutting down. Things are not working properly. Yeah, clothing, shirt, blue jeans. Download hard drive of cell phone. Um, another cell phone. On August 30th, 2023, officers responded to a report of child abuse lo located in Ivan's. Oh, by the way, guys, this stream is obviously going to be demonetized uh, because of the topic and the nature of this topic. I, there's no way to avoid the words that YouTube is, does not want us to use. So please do keep in mind um, that this stream is going to be solely reliant on Super Chats. And if you feel like sending a Super Chat to support the show, I sure appreciate that. You are not required to do that, however. Do not spend your grocery money on me. I will be okay. There, it's a recession right now. But if you have it to give and you feel like doing it, you can do it multiple ways. You can send a Super Chat. You can send Venmos, Cash Apps. Uh, the stuff is PayPal. It's running across the bottom of the screen. And I do appreciate it. Those of you who cannot afford to send tips or Super Chats, please do hit the like button. It is free. And subscribe. It costs yes. you nothing. And you can also make sure you follow me at pjmedia.com and follow me at locals, meganfox.locals.com, because you'll get all the notifications there because YouTube is asshole and they off often do not uh, give you notifications when I go live. Okay, moving on. 
A warrant was, uh, let's see, based on the severity of the child's injuries, the child was transported to the hospital via ambulance. A warrant was served on the child's residence, yielding two arrests for child abuse. See the full report for further information. Oh, boy. August 30th, 2023. <laughs> Sarah, it's my weed money. All right. Hashtag fat. Neck. You can send me your weed money. I will definitely take your weed money. That's not a necessity, is it? Depends. Holy Fox ramen support. I told you not to send me your ramen money. Damn it. You people never listen. And Wheelie Life says, I live in Ruby's hometown of Springville, Utah. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. A monster was among you. Oh, and this mom influencer thing, it really pisses me off too. Like the whole idea of being a yeah. parent, a mom, like a mommy vlogger. And I understand, obviously I'm a streamer. Part of my yeah. life is on stream. I do talk about my children, but I do, I keep them off camera. I would never make yeah. my children into a spectacle or a show. And I feel like people who do this, it's weird. It's wrong. Stop doing it. Don't put your child's life on the internet. It's just, it's gross and it needs to stop. Well, that too, but also don't be a self-righteous um, thunder cow. If, if you're, mm -hmm. you know, I think I have a meme moms, for that. Every mom has you know, a Mount Everest load of mom guilt on them already. And then you have, you know, Ruby coming in here like, you're just not good enough. Right. You're just not. Yeah. Every single mom is a hot mess express some days. And people should totally. just. I mean, like, I'll dole out advice if you ask me for it, like of what I think works or what worked for me. But I'm the first one to tell you I am not a perfect mother. I am a far from perfect mother. My children are totally going to have to go to therapy probably because of something I did. I mean, I, every time I screw up, I'm like, is this the thing? Is this what they're going to tell their therapist for the rest of their lives that I did to them? I mean, I, I get it. I'm, I don't want to be um, somebody who is like telling everybody else what to do and how to do it. Every child is different. And you are the parent for that child. So you're all, everybody's going to do stuff differently. And there isn't one right way, oh, but there is a wrong way. There yeah. is a wrong way. We're going to talk about the wrong way right now. I got to get through this. All right. The neighbor okay. observed uh, duct tape on child one's ankles and wrists and contacted law enforcement. Upon arrival, law enforcement observed the wounds and malnourishment of child one to be severe. He was transported to the St. George Regional Hospital. Child one was placed on a medical hold due to his deep lacerations from being tied up with rope and from his malnourishment. Jody Hillenbrandt was found to be in the direct care of child one as he was staying at her home. In Jody's bathroom, I located gauze which had been used. This observation adds to Jody's knowledge of the abuse in the home. I'm just saying Jody because I can't pronounce her last name yeah. without stumbling. Jody requested a lawyer and did not speak with us. Once given, she she pulled a total Karen at the door, by the way. Wait till we get to that video. It is oh. so maddening. Once My given shock. her charges, mm -hmm, Jody informed me child two and child one should never be allowed around any other kids. With this information and the belief that, Ms. that Jody had knowledge of malnourishment, abuse, and neglect, this charge will be enhanced to a second degree felony. I asked that she not be given bail. Okay, we already read that. Uh, child number two, 10 year old female, was found at Jody's residence after child one made contact with police. Child two was found malnourished and refused medical. It took four hours. We already read this part. Okay, we're going to skip on down. We read this already. Uh, we read this. This is like a reprint medical hold. This is a reprint. I don't know why. Well, maybe because that's Miss Frankie and the other one was Jody. Oh, yeah. Officer activity. On August 30th, officers responded to a report of child abuse located in Ivan's. The complainant reported a redacted child one arrived at their residence, emaciated with duct tape around his legs, thirsty and asking for help. R told the complaint he came from the neighbor's house belonging to Jody. Child one told the complaint his mother's name was Ruby Frankie and he had two sisters back at the residence belonging to Jody. With this information, medical arrived and found child one to be in need of immediate care and transported him to the St. George Regional Hospital. I arrived at the hospital, this is new information, to speak with child one. 
I made contact with Dr. Foster, who informed me that based on child one injuries and vitals, he was going to put a medical hold on him. I made contact with child number one and observed deep lacerations on his ankles with several open wounds. Child one appeared to be malnourished, and I was able to see his bone structure. So his bones were sticking through his skin, you know, sticking yeah. out. I briefly spoke with child number one to gather information for officer safety on the scene at Jody's residence. I learned child one lives with his sisters, child two and other child and mother, Ruby Frankie. I learned child one has been living at Jody's home since May after moving down from Springville. When child one left the home today, he believed both child two and redacted were still in the home. Child one informed me he had not seen child two or redacted in over a month as they were kept separately in the home. <gasps> Oh my God. They weren't even together. Oh my God. I, he wouldn't even have known if they had killed her or not. I, oh my God. And this Sarah, is Sarah, if you want to pop in here now at any time, go go ahead and pop in. We'll we'll add you to the stream. Child one knew they were in the home. As he had heard them, child one informed me that the last time he saw child two, she had short hair like him, brown hair and brown eyes. Child one informed me he liked to jump on the trampoline for fun but it was the only thing he was allowed to do. Child one told me it was a small trampoline, not full size. And those aren't even any fun. No. Dr. Foster had already, they're, they're actually like the opposite of fun. Those tiny trampolines, they do nothing. They're just for like exercising when you're old. Dr. Yeah. Foster had already contacted CPS, redacted. I contacted local CPS worker, redacted to inform him of the case, which just opened. I learned that they had several other cases with this family up north, which went unsupported as they were never available to talk to the family. Mm. Does DCF actually do a flipping thing? I mean, at this no, point. No, only when you're innocent. Only when you're innocent and your kid has oh, an underlying medical disorder do they do something and take the kid because they say you abuse them. But when they're being actually abused, they don't have time to go talk to the family and investigate. It just says, it says so right there. They, as they were never available to talk to the family. CPS was never. That's why they redacted the names. They don't want us to know who these fuckers were that did this, that didn't go and do their job. They should unredact those names. I want to know who the social workers were that couldn't be bothered to go and talk to the family. I contacted medical professionals at the Children's Justice Center who arrived at the hospital for an evaluation of child one. At this time, I went to the Jody to. Jody's residence located at 854, whatever blueprints of the home were obtained from the home builder and used to review the 9,000 square foot home. That's a big house to make sure all rooms were accounted for along with a concrete state vaulted room. When the warrant for the residence was approved, I delegated responsibilities to the officers on scene. All officers present were briefed on the warrant and what items we were looking for. All so they did have a warrant. They did. They got one. All officers mm -hmm. present in the home signed the warrant to, they didn't have them when they first went into the house, I don't think, because he told her he was on exigent circumstances. Yeah. But they do have to get a search warrant to take items, which is what this is. All officers present in the home signed the warrant to acknowledge they understood the property and evidence we were searching for. This is important, you guys. When, when you think that officers come into your house when they search that they can just take anything they want, they can't. They have to have a spelled out list of the things they are specifically looking for. And if they find something in the house that wasn't on the list, they can't take it. So it's, it's very important that they make like a really detailed list of all the things they might be looking for. Um, otherwise, they can't take the thing that's not on the list. Officer B. Ray was assigned to photography. Detective Ward was assigned to evidence collection along with Officer Muse. You know who we needed on this case? Dexter. You think, you think Dexter Morgan would have let this go the way it went? We need Dexter Morgan I'm, on this case. Did you not see Dexter? I, I, I saw a couple episodes and I, I agree in Minecraft allegedly. <laughs> If Dexter Morgan had been working this case, the outcome would have been much different. I just say, Megan, they are pushing us closer and closer to vigilante justice. They just I know, are. I know. It's just. Uh, I had officer. Let's see. Officer Pandoyo. Wait. And Officer Hall were tasked with searching for items of evidentiary value. Officer Palufo was it what a name? Palufo was in charge of managing the scene log. I had Officer 
Pikyavit sitting with Jody in the office of the residence. I had Officer Hines sitting with Ruby Frankie in the attached casita. Sergeant Tobler was sitting with the redacted child two with, okay. After approximately four hours, child two agreed to medical treatment. Medical arrived and transported her to the St. George Regional Hospital for medical treatment. I learned child two was also being held after medical professionals deemed her to be malnourished as well. In the search of the residence, officers located several rolls of duct tape, plastic wrap, used rope, cayenne pepper, and honey paste described from victim child one. They rubbed cayenne pepper into the wounds. Oh, these um, and Sarah shitty motherfucking people. You. What? Sarah's uh, what? Sarah's, ch Sarah's chatting with you um, in the chat. Sorry. Uh, Sarah's sending oh. an SOS. Oh, okay. Are you having trouble, Sarah, connecting? I sent you an email. Oh, your computer's being... Uh, oh, how about from the phone? Yeah, no, you can use your phone. You can click the link on your phone. In fact, here, do this, Sarah. Download the StreamYard app on your phone and then open the link in the app. Um, the app works way better. The app works really good on the phone. So there's a StreamYard app. Download that. And then you should be able to put the link into the app and be connected. Okay. And if that doesn't work, you can just click the link on your phone from Twitter or wherever I sent. Where did I send it? Your email. Just click the link and your the phone will connect you. Okay. Yeah, with and it should work with Android. Try it. Go to the Android store and see if there's a StreamYard app. If so, download that. You've got time. There is no yeah. no rush. And if it doesn't that work, then just click the link. And if you want to then if a sadistic person uses honey and cayenne pepper to I, treat these wounds. People, uh, 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 monsters. These are child abusers. These are child abusers. There's no other there, this is sick. These items. Oh wait. Uh honey paste. Okay. Used medical gauze and other documents describing the forms of discipline in the household. These items were photographed and gathered as evidence. Julie, oh, thank you for the huge super chat. Says, I only eat cereal because I burn everything, so my grocery bill is cheap. <laughs> thank you. This is for the therapy <laughs> fund after reading this disturbing stuff. Oh, honey, I have secondary trauma from the stories I've covered over 20 years. Mo and I were kind of talking about that earlier. Um, yeah, we're, you know, the Megan like, and Mo meetup will be at the ayahuasca tent and, you know, one of the states that allows the yeah. trauma dump where you yep. don't have to talk about your feelings, but you can just like have a fever dream. Uh huh. Seriously, I think that in order to get better from my neck issues, I'm seriously going to have to try something like that. I'm starting to think that it oh. is. See, I was going to just try to. See Although if I will I tell you. Boob reduction, but. <laughs> I am moving I mean, a lot better. Too. I am moving a lot better from the uh, chiropractic treatment yesterday. Like I can turn my head all the way and it still hurts, but it's kind of a good hurt, kind of like a stretch hurt oh, instead good. of a, instead of like a, that's oh my God, great. I'm going to die hurt. You know, look at how I'm moving. I mean, this looks pretty that good, is right? awesome. And your hair looks beautiful. Thank you. It's, it's been a, um, a, a busy day, but, oh, and she's here. Let's see if it works. Uh, that's Sarah, awesome. and your Sarah hair? Pimp Shoes. Okay, got to turn down the uh, the the. Thing I in the shut background. it off, bossy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can hear you good. Okay, so this is this is good. So, uh, Sarah is here. Or do you want me to call you Pimp Shoes, or should we go with Sarah? Well, I'm in witness protection. You just blew my cover. It doesn't really matter at this point. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, then why the hell would you use your real name in the chat? How do you know that? That's my, my real name. Well, that's true. It probably is. Yeah. All you right. Here know. we go. You never know. All right. <laughs> you did mail me a book, but yeah, you do know. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. I did get you a book. All right. That's true. All right. I want it. To get it for me. That's okay. I remember everything. So you don't have to. All right. Excellent. All right. During the investigation, Excellent. we learned of Jody of Jody and Ruby Frankie's presence on social media and podcasts. In the home, several laptops were located along with a room that appeared to be set up for filming purposes. With this information and reason to believe that these laptops and cell phones on the suspects could provide evidentiary value to the case, another warrant was drafted to collect these items. 
the warrant was approved, and Officer Pandoyo and Sergeant Hallman were tasked to collect the electronic devices. In total, five laptops and three cell phones were recovered. I learned that the father of the children, Kevin Frankie, That's a lot of arrived too. A lot of what? Tech stuff. Yeah. Recording devices. Yeah. Well, yeah, that makes sense because they had the podcast and like all the stuff. So well, and criminals film what they do too. Oh God. I hope there's no video evidence. My God. I arrived would be shocked at, if there weren't. Kevin I, Frankie yeah, arrived I think they at, felt justified in doing what they were doing and were probably using it at some of their BS meetings to show exactly what gave it how, away, the compound. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh, don't give me a wrench. Look, oh, I barely know oh, how to do my own stuff. Mm -hmm. Megan, I barely what? know how to do my own stuff. Don't give That's me a right. wrench. Still going to give That's you a wrench. That's what I said, but it happened anyway. <laughs> I know, Sarah. I thought you said you wanted one, so I gave you one. And You're then... changing your story. You are lying. I am, am I? Well, no. Yes. Also, also remember, <laughs> also remember, though, that I have a terrible memory. I can't remember anything. I know. So that's why, that's it's not why usually, I'm here. It's not usually lying. It's usually just misremembering. Yeah, um, I understand. Same problem. <laughs> Maybe same medication, but I've that's neither here nor problem. there. Sorry. All right. Here we go. Um, I learned that the father of the children, Kevin Frankie, arrived at the Santa Clara and Ivan's police department. Officer Hall was sent to the department where he detained Mr. Frankie until we were able to come back and interview him about his involvement with his children. When the search of the residence was completed, Ruby, Frankie, and Jody were detained and placed in handcuffs, double locked, and checked for fit. I performed a pat-down search of Ruby Frankie prior to putting her in Officer Hines's patrol vehicle, where she was then transported back to the Santa Clara Ivins Police Department for questioning. I then performed a pat-down of Jody's person and placed her in my patrol vehicle. I transported Miss Hildebrandt, went back to the Santa Clara's Police Department for questioning. Once back at the police department, I had Officer Hines watching Ruby in the downstairs interview room. Captain Rogers was watching Jody in the upstairs interview room. And Officer Hall was watching Kevin Frankie in the upstairs conference room. Uh, interview with Kevin Frankie. Now, I only saw bits and pieces of this. So people are telling me I got the wrong impression because I thought that this guy just was in shock and having trouble taking it in. But they said the second interview is really upsetting. We're going to get to that today. We're trying to get there quickly. So let's listen. Let's read the uh, uh, notes and then we'll get to the interviews. Lieutenant Studley and I first met with Kevin Frankie in regard to his involvement with the condition of his children two and child one. Mr. Frankie was read his Miranda rights. Mr. Frank. Oh, they did. So they it, is important to, it is important to note that all Kevin knew at the first interview was that he was picking two of his kids up. That's it. Right. That's what he was told. Yep. Mr. Frankie informed us he understood his rights and was willing to speak with us. His interview was audio and video recorded and is summarized as follows. Kevin stated he was currently married to Ruby Frankie, but they separated in July 25th of 2023, and he has not seen his children since. Mr. Frankie stated he did not treat his wife right and struggled with a pornography addiction, which led to them separating with an unverbal no contact order. Mr. Frankie and Imposed I have reason by Jody. Yeah. And I have reason to believe that he did not have this, that this was a psychological abuse thing that was done to him by uh, Jody. 1,000%. Yeah. And I have, and in yeah. fact, this is, this is a good time to actually bring this up. Hold on a second. Because I took uh, clips of, I have clips of, hold on, where are my clips? I have it's a few clips. It's heartbreaking to watch, watch his cognitive overload in real time. He is at least, there are at least three that I know of uh, families that she has done this to. Uh, and I have yeah. clips from her own niece. The, she did it to. Right. And I have clips from the Mormon Stories podcast that I sat around last awesome. night making. It was worth watching, wasn't it? I, yeah, I did. I watched the, 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 the niece one back when it aired and I'm having YouTube problems. YouTube is spinning. Damn it. Hold on. Mm. All right, hold on. Let me see if I can get this to work. So I listened to the niece one and her story is like upsetting, but I think more people have seen that than they have seen this. Mm -hmm. So this one is, let me see if I can make it work. Please work. Brian Tibbetts. 
uh, he came forward. Now, the first family that this this podcast uh, interviewed, the first man that they interviewed, same story, but his wife's attorney made them take it down. So it's not Adam on... Paul Steve is his name. Yes. Yes. All right. Uh -huh. Talk to our therapist. She knows how to tune a guy into shape. The therapist is Jody Hildebrandt. And uh, so what year is this? 17? This is this is 16? the fall of 2016. Okay. So she didn't talk to Jody yet, but she was getting coaching from my niece who was working intensely with Jody. The reason why she was working is because her husband consumed porn sometimes. And he was he was in such the doghouse, like to the tune that he had to stand up at a family party and tell the entire family, children oh included, that, that he is bringing a curse upon his family because he consumes porn. He's addicted. He can't be trusted anything. He can't be trusted around anyone. He's out of control. He had to tell this to the whole family. And is it your understanding? You okay, so that's humiliation. Oh, no. oh yeah. So this over is over problems the they don't have. Over problems they don't have. This would be if a man ever looked at porn. She mm -hmm. would say they had a porn addiction. Some of these men didn't look at porn, but she convinced them that they were porn addicts anyway because of the way their sex drive was. A normal sex yeah. drive, like yep. wanting sex from his wife all the time, would be considered you have a porn problem. Or you he was being lust selfish. addiction. Yeah, an addiction of some, yeah, sex addiction. Yeah, and everything's an addiction with Jody. Yeah, and so, but here's the weird part. So she would push these men out of the lives of the women and then take over the role of that patriarchal role. Like, yep. it's so pathologically sick. It is It is so sick. All right, so I have more. I have more. Where and it's so go? systematic and calculated. All right, so here is the next one that I pulled. Just so you know, she like, really what... Kevin Frankie was actually going through. This is the this is her mo. This is what she does to people. Yes. My, my oh yeah. Is, my YouTube is not working right now. I so will, it, she, she does follow all cult leader, um, you know, protocol in that it's always about sleeping with someone else's wife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jim Jones Jody really never. Sure. Jody is. But she hates homosexuality. Was hates she it. was never interested in helping us achieve our goals. She was interested in uh -huh. helping us and achieve wife. her goals, only her goals. And what were those? Um, that children will be controlled and monitored all day, that nobody shall have contact with those children unless they've been vetted, unless they're totally honest. And, and by vetted, like meet with her and get vetted. Um, and the way that my parents were vetted is they showed up to Jody no, and they, no they apologized and they said they'll do whatever Jody said. And when they left, they're like, to hell with that. This woman's a, a, a whack. And and my parents are still active. They're, they're, they're believers. They, but they saw right through her and they tried to tell me and they tried to tell my ex, like Jody's crazy, but we like, yeah. we believe her. like she, Oh my God. All right. So there's, so she wanted to control the children, but she also, and the thing they really don't hit on is like her wanting to control the, the wives. The wives. And I do believe, like Sarah just said, I believe that it's because she is a lesbian. And I think that she and Frankie had a, mm -hmm. or Ruby, Frankie had a romantic relationship. And all at the same time, they're, they're right. They're, they're preaching that homosexuality is wrong and yet engaging. In it's this. like re it's like repressed rage, right? You just take it out on literally, physically take it out on the most vulnerable. Yeah, which is disgusting. Oh, it's it's hideous. It's, it's absolutely hideous. This is so she kicks. This is her mo. She gets the husband so, out of the I house. Said, Jody Hildebrandt's encouraging your wife to kick With you out of the house uh -huh. for the offense of losing your faith. Uh huh. And uh huh. What else? Uh, losing my faith. What about uh, the masturbation porn stuff? That's that that's all like I think in Jody's mind and my ex-wife's mind is I left the church because I was masturbating, because I was sinning, so I lost the spirit. I think that's how they thought it, but uh, to me that uh, had nothing to do with that, obviously. Um, but I said i'm I'm not gonna leave, but my ex-wife moved out and she uh, moved in with some family and she took the kids. 
and she still wanted to stay together. Um, but we, she started working with Jody. Like Ruby. And at this point, Jody was the first therapist we worked with. And over the next couple of years, we worked with nine more therapists. And the weird part was all nine of those therapists did not agree with Jody. And it, he, they still couldn't talk his wife out of believing her. Like all nine therapists were like, no, this woman is nuts. None of this is so real So she therapy. and he would, would be continually paying still every month, even though he's going through all of this. Yeah, He's still paying her every month. They gave her $30,000, this family. Holy God. But oh, in, yeah. In about a year, they paid her a, an entire salary like they were like they had hired a person to, you know, I don't know, to do their finances or something. They paid a person $30,000 in one year. That's more you than try a private to quit school early, education. She'll shame and guilt you. Okay. Do we think that she got rid of the fathers because she wanted to hurt the kids? Because to hurt children, you have to get the... You, she can get moms on the side, but the dads, the dads aren't going to let this fly. She's so, extraordinarily has, mental, mentally ill and sadistic. Yeah, yeah. she must so you be would a have sadist. To get the dad she out of is. the family because you know we've all had that day where you go to get a towel and you've done laundry all day, but there's no towels. Yeah, and mom goes a little cray. And dad comes in there and he's like, okay, simmer down. It's just a towel. Right. I'll find one for you. That's true. My husband does that with me all the time. It drives me crazy. It makes me mad. I'm like, don't tell me not to be mad. I'm, like, I'm don't angry. Tell me to call me. I just, I'm, she, she put a ring on my wooden table with that water thing that I told her not to put there a million times. And he's like, Megan, you always have the best table. excuses for everything. <laughs> But you're right. You just Men... back it up with. Uh, uh. <laughs> I love it. But this, she would also l listen to what else she would do. This is so nuts. To to drive mm -hmm. the point home of fear um, th that was put into my ex-wife, at one of our therapists, um, my ex-wife said um, we were separated, and and she said it's because. It's because he has raped the children. And she said, wow. raped. And I was like, I mean, I stood up and I was like, what? What are you talking about? And the therapist stood up and he's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Has there been, has there been sexual misconduct or, or, or sex abuse? And I was like, I've never touched those children. And she said, well, I mean, yeah, he hasn't physically raped them, but he has spiritually raped my children. Oh. So Jody Hildebrandt would encourage the use of the term rape. Yes. All right. So the stream is totally demonetized now. So just letting you know, keep the super chats coming. <laughs> there's no way we're getting away with this one at this point. This no. is, I'm not even going to try to turn on the green, the green button. As leverage. <laughs> yes. To help drive wedges between husband and wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, to drive the point. Oh my gosh. I mean, that is diabolical. It is absolutely diabolical. And what is spiritual grape? Does anyone know? No, I mean, it's just And why is he term. paying for it? <laughs> for the yeah. love of all that is holy. Pass. Someone. I mean, for so, goodness sake. Because Kevin Frankie was paying to do Jody's workbooks this entire year. Right. Oh, Lord, I don't have enough crayons right. for that. And he would, you can tell in his interview, he's still totally brainwashed into believing this is all his fault. He's like, it's me. Yep. They inv she invited me to leave the house because I have this pornography problem. And it's because of the way I treated my wife and what the shame I brought on my children. And like, he is just like, he believes it. He has swallowed the, the Kool-Aid totally. Um, and the police are so trying to figure out what the dynamic is, and they are so confused by his answers. Right. See, they don't know, though, this background. They don't know the yeah, kind of they, psychological they know, abuse they, he, right, exactly. that he's been through. So this one, so this is a question about, like, you know, what about where was Kevin Frankie? Why, why didn't he know about this? Because everybody was asking, how did Ruby Frankie's kids end up in handcuffs? tortured in the basement of Jody Hildebrandt's house, where was the husband? Where was Kevin yeah. Frankie? And the answer was Jody Hildebrandt had cut off Kevin yep. Frankie 
from Ruby Frankie and the kids such that Kevin, because he was evil, because he was a sex addict or whatever, I'm assuming, was was no longer worthy to be with the kids. And this parental alienation is both how the husband becomes more and more yep. disempowered and cut off from the family. It's also how Jody Hildebrand gets more and more power. It's almost yep. like she becomes, she takes on the patriarchal yep. and in Mormon parlance, the, the male role. Jody Hildebrand becomes the patriarch of these families. How sick A is butch. this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, I have the cripple pass. You have the the bush the, pass. The bush same cripple pass. pass. I got a cripple and pass. And the cripple oh, pass. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. So, um, I, I this is interesting. Well, actually, I I don't want to tell your story, Sarah. So if you oh want no, to please tell your story. do, please do. Don't let make me do it. Oh, That's okay. Way well, here. So you don't you don't mind if I tell Mo about your medical? No, situation? I don't mind any at all. Okay. Well, Mo, Sarah also has CRPS. Oh, I, I know. It's so um, odd because Sarah came in um, like a couple months back and she's like, I must just attract people with CRPS because she hadn't. <laughs> and I said, well, I guess. <laughs> it's it's uh, it's interesting that like a lot of since the Maya Kowalski case, I've been contacted by so many people and who have it and who. And that's yeah. how I found you, Megan, was that through the Kowalski trial. Right. Right. And I mean, it just, oh, shoot. I closed the thing I was looking at. What the hell? Megan, what are you doing? What you Where's always do? Ah, there it is. I know what I always do. Is <laughs> you sound like me. Oh, like, what did I do that. now? What did I do now? Where's my window? Okay. Here I we just go. always hit all the CRPS buttons. CRPS is, is complex regional pain syndrome for those that are asking. Um, general, it's what Maya Kowalski had full body. Uh, so, it can and generally is just affected in one limb, but it can be full body. It can be idiopathic, which means that it just comes on on its own. I believe, look, I'm not a doctorologist, but She's another type. Yes, doctorologist. Another type happens after an injury. Your nerves just never calm down. They don't know what causes it. We're all a bit confused. It used to be called a. Uh, RSD. Reflex sympathetic dystrophy. Yeah. So they just decided to change the name. Make it more complex. Yes. And um, all right. So we'll go back over here to this, the Kevin's interview. Uh, so Mr. Frankie stated he did not treat his wife right and the struggle with pornography addiction, which led to them separating with a verbal no contact order. Mr. Frankie informed me there was no court paperwork, but he and Ruby agreed that he would not contact her or the kids. Mr. Frankie informed me that he had heard from Ruby approximately four times since the separation. Mr. Frankie stated he loves his wife and family and every morning sees their picture and makes the commitment to be better for his family to end up back with them. Mr. While Frankie doing Jody's workbooks. Oh, my God. Mr. Frankie stated he supports his family financially. Mr. Frankie works full time and his money goes into a joint account, which Ruby pulls to support the family. Mr. Frankie informed us he received a phone call to come to the Santa Clara Ivins Police Department to pick up his kids. He would not share who contacted him. He was aware that his wife, Ruby, was in business with Jody Hillenbrandt, that they had run a podcast together called Connections. Mr. Frankie stated he watched the podcast weekly and enjoyed the content. Mr. Frankie stated he trusts and values Jody and her perspective. Mr. Frank informed us his older son, Chad, met with Jody previously via Zoom for counseling. Mr. Frank yeah, informed us he believed these meetings with Jody were beneficial. He did not have knowledge of any other kids meeting with her. Mr. Frankie believed that Ruby and the kids were still living in the residence that he moved out of in Springville. He stated he was not aware of the kids living with Jody as he had not spoken with them or seen them in a year. He informed us the last time he saw child two, she had long hair and was very talkative. He stated the last time he saw child one, he wasn't chubby, but he definitely wasn't skinny. He described him as normal. Kevin stated he completely trusts and loves his wife, Ruby. He stated he still wants to end up with his wife. So with his knowledge, he just can't believe it and feels like it can't be true. He stated because he trusts his wife in the care of their children, he doesn't want to say anything that could incriminate her or him. 
He informed me they were scrutinized for neglect before on YouTube with their eight passengers account. He stated this was because one of their sons, Chad, took to social media to discuss how he slept on a beanbag for eight months. Mr. Frankie stated these allegations were not true and that it never happened. Lieutenant Studley and I were present while DCFS notified Kevin that the four minor children, redacted, redacted, child one and child two, were being taken into Child Protective Services custody. I observed Mr. Frankie to be emotional while receiving this news. He responded that it was time to get his kids back into his custody and take them back to his home to care for them. End of interview. Following this interview, I believe Mr. Frankie trusted his wife, Ruby, to care for his kids while he provided the financial support. I believe Mr. Frankie, Frankie did not have involvement in the abuse and neglect of child two and child one, as he stated he has not seen or spoken to them in over a year. For this reason, Mr. Frankie was released. Interview with Ruby. Sergeant Tobler and I met with Ruby Frankie. This is the interview in audio summarized as followed. I met with Ruby and asked where she was from to get to know her. She did not respond and just looked at me with her weird, slow blinking stare. Wait till we get to that. That so creeped weird. me out more than anything. Me too. What sure did you think about that? She's not a lizard person. We are not sure. What? We're not sure she's not a lizard person. That's what we're saying. Something's going on. What was it, Sarah, when you saw that, the slow, blinking, cold stare with no emotion? Like, how do you, how did you, how did that hit you? Oh, it just made, it, she looked like someone who had been, my first thought was she looks like someone who's been sex trafficked. She did look the like look she was in a catatonic, face. like a catatonic state. But it at the same weird. time, I heard her phone calls and, and she was deliberately controlling that but i still think there's more behind it i mean i probably the brainwashing and things like that but yeah mm. she did not answer her because i asked her again she did not answer but shortly after requested a lawyer we informed mrs frankie we would not ask anything incriminating yeah sure and just wish to get to know her You're right mrs frankie stated she still wanted a lawyer they really shouldn't have asked any other questions after the first time we were with DCFS while they provided paperwork to Ms. Frankie, informing her they would have her four minor children in their custody. Mrs. Frankie did not ask any questions. End of interview. Nope. Inter interview with Jody. Sergeant Tobler and I then met with Jody. This interview was audio and video recorded and summarized as follows. I met with Ms. with Jody and informed her I wanted to understand the situation. Jody informed me her lawyer told her not to say anything, but she wanted to share because she had nothing to hide. Oh, this woman. Right. Oh, Lord. Jody informed me she trusted her lawyer's judgment because he's a good guy, but she wanted to tell us everything so we could understand. I informed Jody. We, they'd she, have a lot of empathy for her situation if they understood. <laughs> right. Yeah, I they're informed just Jody. Really, really bad kids. I mean, <laughs> I, I have three. You don't wild, know how evil those bastards children. could be. <laughs> I, I, I have three wild feral children and i have issues with ruby going before she met jody because i've seen the video where she didn't take her six-year-old lunch oh, lunch she's a and six -year -old. expecting a six-year-old to make their own lunch is that ruby you... was primed primed for this and i don't think jody's Christmas done thing. in picking out her target either i mean all right Listen, Lois. You Her must mind be, was open to it. Yeah. Lois, you must be new here. We cannot speak about dark issues without laughing about something occasionally. If you do not like that, I suggest you go to crime, Law and Crime or Court TV and get their sanitized bullshit, you know, responses to stuff where they don't act like human beings. But here... We, we joke and laugh even in the darkest of topics because otherwise we would just be committing acts of violence probably. So, yeah, you know, you really chuckle or stuff. you buckle. Right. This is stuff that will break you. This is stuff if you if you sit down and you think about what these kids went through and how they were isolated and how the family was destroyed because this woman has control issues and delusions of grandeur and she's where she's to control people. Yeah. It, so, not you Lois Thomas <laughs> so she's like know, I thought I was I, in trouble I was like I, I, what did yeah. Lois Thomas do no I mean, it was the other it was the other Lois oh yeah sorry. I mean if you want to hear dark humor go around first responders they have to see right. this stuff every day I mean we're kind of like that. 
We're, we're kind yeah. of lawyers and cops and journalists have dark senses of humor. We, there's no other way to to do it. You can't get through. You cannot stare into yeah. the abyss. You cannot stare into Try the being abyss a every day. Yeah. <laughs> you can't stare into the abyss every day and come out unscathed. And the way that you deal with it Beautiful. is usually through humor. And um, there's nothing we can do about that. So buckle in, folks. Buckle up. This is the way it is here. And if you cannot handle it, you are free to go somewhere else. All right. Uh, I informed Jody she was able to answer any questions she wanted as we were trying to understand the relationship between Ruby and the kids. Jody again stated her attorney said not to say anything. End of interview. Concluding the interview, both Jody and Ruby were placed under arrest and placed in handcuffs. Jody complained of a shoulder injury. Oh, cry me a river, ma'am. They the shoulder all get injury? hurt right before they got to go to jail. Mm. Well, She's complaining of a Jesus shoulder injury too. while she was rubbing uh, cayenne pepper into the wounds of children. Give me a break. Mm -hmm. That were so, hogtied to the floor. So Officer Just, Hines and I assisted in placing Jody in two adjoining handcuffs for comfort. Oh, it's nice that someone saw to her comfort. She couldn't see to the children's comfort, though. I noticed no. that Jody, she, I notified Jody she was under arrest for two counts of child abuse for both child two and child one. Jody then told me she wanted to tell me everything and wanted me to really hear her. I then told Jody I respected her wish to speak with an attorney and was willing to hear her out when her attorney was present for questioning. And a sentence is redacted. Jody then told me again she hoped I really heard what she was saying to me. I informed Jody Ugh. again that I would wait until oh, her don't attorney. Oh, speak me. I bet I know what this was. I bet I know what this is because it came out in court where they started accusing the children of essaying other children, which is really And horrific. having a porn addiction at the age of three. Yeah. And why the hell, how would they even have access to children? They've been tied up and abused their whole lives. This, it just makes no sense. I informed yep. Jody again, I would wait until her attorney was present for any questioning. With this information, Jody uttered to me without question. It led me to believe her direct care and custody of these children and gave me the reason to believe she was responsible for the abuse, neglect, and malnourishment of the children. I then made contact with Ruby prior to placing her in the patrol vehicle. I performed a search of Ruby's person and informed her of her charges. And I then placed Ruby in the patrol vehicle and her seatbelt was securely fastened. This concluded my contact with Jody and Ruby. Both females were transported to the Washington County Jail and booked on the charges below. I submitted a warrant for Jody's white iPhone uh, in an attempt to gather more information about her knowledge and participation in the child abuse, neglect, and malnourishment of both children. The warrant was approved. The phone was taken by the Santa Clara Ivins Police Department evidence custodian, Detective Lewis, with SGPD for a download. On August 31st, I received the medical reports for Child 1 and Child 2 from Julie Cole with the Washington County Children's Justice Center. In the medical report for Child 1, it states that the return of this child to the hands of the caregiver who caused these injuries may result in further injury or death. Yeah, you think? You think? The reports for Child 2 and Child 1 both discuss the extreme level of malnourishment to each of the children. Both medical reports have been added, and of course, they are redacted because they're HIPAA protected. And we may, it, we, we have CIA level redactions here. This is a little overkill. They probably could have released some of it, but there, there's also photographs in here that they redacted. Um, Thank God. Yeah. We yeah. don't want to see that. Officer activity on August 30th. 30th, Officer Palufo and I responded to child abuse in Ivins. While en route, dispatch told me that a redacted had arrived at a house with duct tape wrapped around his ankles and wrists. When I arrived, a white passenger car pulled up next to me. The female driver, Jody, told me she was looking for a boy. <gasps> Jody seemed out of, out of breath and very worried. I oh, told Jody, bet she I was. Yeah. I told Jody that officers were out looking for the boy. Jody said she would wait for officers at her house. <gasps> I arrived at the house and observed a male juvenile sitting on a chair. He's such a little hero, man. I know. I know how brave he was. So cause... brave. I observed plastic wrap and duct tape around the juvenile's wrists and ankles. Officer Palufo spoke with Mr. Danny Clarkson. 
I asked the juvenile his name, Danny Clarkson's the neighbor. I asked the juvenile his name. He said, child one, medical personnel arrived and tended to him. I took photos of his wrists and ankles while medical unwrapped them. Child one had wounds on the front and back of his ankles and wrists. I observed child one was very emaciated. Medical personnel told me that they were trying to re remove the bandages on child one. His skin was coming off. Medical personnel placed the plastic wrap uh -huh. and duct tape in four separate paper bags and labeled which extremity they were removed from. I asked child one if he lived close by and he said he lived in Springville. He told me that he has been visiting that lady, Jody, since May of this year. I asked him how he knew Jody. He said his mother, Ruby Frankie, met her years a few years ago and they are friends. I asked child one how long the plastic wrap and duct tape were on his legs and wrists and he said since last night. I asked him why they were put on, and he said because the gashes were there and it was supposed to help. Child one said he got the wounds on his wrists and ankles from being tied to the ground with ropes. I asked child All one who, who put the ropes on him, and he said his mother and neighbor Jody did, and they told him it was supposed to help him with what he had been choosing. Child one said his mother Jody covered his wounds with cayenne, pepper, and honey. I asked child one. Who else was at the house? And he said Jody and his sister, child two, were there. Medical personnel transported child one to St. George. Chief R. Flowers, what a great name, Chief Flowers. Captain Rogers, <laughs> Lieutenant Studley, Sergeant Hallman, Sergeant Tobler arrived to assist. We arrived at Miss uh, at Jody's residence located at 854, whatever. We knocked on the door and announced ourselves. Jody answered the door. We asked her to step out. She was on the phone with her lawyer. <laughs> mm-hmm. I asked whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I asked Jody who else was in the house. She told me a little girl, child two, was in the bathroom. Sergeant Hallman, Sergeant Tolber, Tobler, and Officer Palufo entered the house to check the safety and welfare of anyone else in the home. Officers located child two sitting in a closet in the bathroom. I stayed in the dark. Mm -hmm. I stayed with Miss with Jody in the living room while officers drafted a search warrant. Lieutenant Studley gave Jody a copy of the search warrant. At 1429 hours, I escorted Jody to her office in the house and stayed with her while officers executed the search warrant. I remained with Jody until I was relieved by Lieutenant Studley. Lieutenant Studley. He better be good looking oh with a name like that. He better be. He's you better be dude. you better be ripped, Lieutenant Studley, and on the <laughs> calendar. And Detective J. Bate uh <laughs> statement. Jody suspect Jody stated only two children were at the house, child one and child two. Jody said child two was in the bathroom. Jody stated the child's mother, Ruby, was driving to the house from Springfield, Br Springville. I want to say Springfield because I'm from Illinois. So when I see spring in the front, I just immediately say field, Springfield. <laughs> I, Springville is too difficult for me to say. We know what you mean. We know what yeah. you mean. Yes. Child one victim stated he lived in Springville and has been visiting that lady since May of this year. Child one said his mother met Jody a few years ago. They are friends. Child one stated the plastic rack and duct tape had been on his legs and rinse, wrists since last night. Child one said the plastic wrap and duct tape were on him because the gashes were there and it was supposed to help. Child one stated he got the wounds on his wrists and ankles from being tied to the ground with ropes. Child one said his mother and neighbor Jody tied him with the ropes and they told him it was supposed to help him with what he had been choosing. And this is again, the cayenne pepper follow-up needed. With saran no. wrap. Mm. Mike, this is Officer Pondoyo. Uh, in, okay, we know this part. During this, okay, before my arrival, a security sweep was conducted on the home. During the sweep, one juvenile was located and one adult female was detained. I con contacted Sergeant Hallman at the residence and was informed there was still one missing juvenile. I was tasked to conduct a secondary sweep to locate the missing juvenile. As officers searched for the missing juvenile, a warrant was drafted for the home due to the home having a panic room that we could not make entry or make contact with anyone on the other side. Once the warrant and was Joey approved, Joey wouldn't give them the code to. I read and signed the warrant. Detective Bate conducted a briefing. I followed the evidence team and searched the area once the photos were taken. Officers were unable to locate any other juveniles in the residence. An addendum was drafted and approved to gather laptops and phones. I gathered five Apple MacBook Pro laptops and three Apple iPhones for Detective Ward. I collected one folder containing miscellaneous documents logged and stored into evidence at the Santa Clara Ivins Police Department. Later, I assisted Officer Hines in transporting two females to the Washington County Jail. 
Now, uh, Officer Palufo's statement, uh, he went to our after, okay, so he's talking to the neighbor, he gets the neighbor's statement. Uh, while Sergeant Tobler and Sergeant Holman searched the property, I covered an empty hallway in two rooms with open doors. While holding cover, Officer Pikiavit informed me that there was a girl in the bathroom down the hall named Child 2. I called Child 2, but I had no contact. Once Sergeant Tobler and Sergeant Holman made their way to me, I informed them that a girl named Child 2 was inside the bathroom, and that's when they both located her. After conducting a secondary sweep with Officer Pandoyo and Sergeant Hallman of the property, we did not contact any other individual. After securing the scene, I was in charge of the perimeter and logged personnel in and out of the crime scene. Um, Redacted said that someone had rang his doorbell. That was the, okay, we, we already read his thing. Um, got that. We got all that. Okay. Officer Hallman. He was called to assist with a welfare check. It was reported that a ju juvenile went into a neighboring uh, home and asked for help. We got that part. On arrival, information was obtained that possibly two additional children were missing and in the same emergent state of need. That is so scary. As a, mm -hmm. as a police officer to hear that news, that oh, is yeah. so scary. We knocked and announced the police presence. The door was opened by a female. We entered the home to conduct a security sweep for the missing children. During the sweep of the home, I found a small child in a closet in the bathroom. The child appeared afraid and looked very emaciated. Sergeant Tobler began to interact with the child while I completed the sweep of the home. On the set of the steps in the hallway that led to the bathroom where I located the child, I noted what appeared to be a set of used rolled ace bandages. Once the home had been checked for the third reported missing juvenile, we were not able to locate them. In the basement, we located what we believed to be a safe room, protected with a large safe vault style door. It had Liberty written on it, by the way. It was suspected that the child may be in that room. A search warrant was drafted for the home and submitted for approval by Sergeant Tobler. The warrant was approved and I assisted with searching the home for evidence of child abuse and information attempting to locate the reported missing third juvenile. During the search of the home, I located a roll of plastic consistent with what had been used on the initial complainant victim. The item was found in a closet in the hallway south of the main kitchen area. I pointed out the item to Detective Ward, who was collecting, documenting evidence, and continued my search. Once completed with the search, I remained on the scene as security until the search warrant was completed. Sergeant Tobler. I observed, okay, upon arrival, I found that Child 1 was in the ambulance. Oh, so he goes, he talked to Child 1 first. I observed a large open sore on the top of child one's left ankle and two lacerations on the bottom of his ankle. The lacerations appeared to be from being bound by a rope type restraint. I observed a large open sore on the bottom of child one right ankle. All right, so we know about these. Oh, Lord. He was slim, appeared abnormal from malnutrition. I can't believe he had the strength to walk there. Mm, I know. I know. I know. Wait till you read the journal. Yeah. When Jody's complaining that the little girl keeps falling over, she says she's doing it on purpose. And I'm like, uh, no, you're starving her. She's falling over because okay, she has Shanda. no strength. She has no strength left. <laughs> oh, my God. What? Who? What? I don't know what Mo's referencing, but I, I know oh, a, Shanda, a certain case. Vanda, Vanda, oh, okay. Yeah, Schneider that's what I thought you were whatever. referencing. Yeah. What am I missing? She Who's claimed. Um, she's just the devil. So she she is a mom who uh, starved and tortured her 15-year-old autistic son. <gasps> oh, yeah, that one. Oh, God. Yeah, oh. but she claimed that, you know, he was faking the fact that he was being malnourished and unresponsive. Oh that was That's horrible. fake. That's horrible. Uh, yeah. Let me hit these super chats so we don't get too behind. Wheelie Life, thanks for the super chat. Ruby's main house is in Springville, Utah. Thank you for that. Max Bang, thanks for the super chat. Just sending some love. Oh, love right back at you. Love, Aww. love. Jody my, was my, trying to get her hands does. on that title, Many too, hearts. of that house. Oof. Ashley Casey, uh, thanks for being a member for five months. Weed is a necessity, <laughs> she says. Well, especially yeah. for this story. David Washburn, thanks for Absolutely. the super chat. Since I grow my own. Well, then you can send me your weed money because you don't That's need to. That's my man. 
Becca Lynn, thanks for the super chances. Thanks for all you do, Megan, and you do so much. Oh, well, it doesn't feel like much. I just sit here and read shit. But Debbie Florio, thanks for the super chat. Says, I wish Jody's niece was believed, then this may have been avoided. If R had not Amen. escaped, I, I truly believe this this babies would have perished. Sarah, you probably know this. Did the niece call authorities and tell them what was going she on? She went to the police. And they but didn't Jody came in behind her and had it all the power and all the authority and she was not believed oh she went God. through everything these kids went through oh she probably gosh. has a pretty good lawsuit she probably has a good lawsuit about that she does she doesn't want to do it oh. joanne wall it, thanks to the super chat says they shave child two's hair as punishment i know we're getting to that we're getting to just it absolute cows I'm Rosemary Cato, thanks for this, the super chat. I love your shows and listen to your podcast every day when I'm driving. I think you're so funny and thank you for all the good things you do. All oh, thank you. I'm sorry oh. that this podcast doesn't get up there every single day, but I'm trying. Fox Den Daily, uh, <laughs> asterisk. <laughs> yes. Fox Den Daily, uh, download it now. Swoosh. Try it. Try it. <laughs> Wheelie Life, uh, thanks for the super chat. Says Springville Police and EMT 911 system is always down. I hate Springville. They never take lives seriously. Isn't Springville the name of the town in The Simpsons? It's Spring something. Spring, Springfield. Springfield. Oh, yeah, it's named after Oregon. Gotcha. Suzanne Parrish, thanks for the super chat. Says for a new Costco blanket. Well, thanks. Let's see. And Joanne Wall, thanks to the Super Chat, says Mo looks like Hillary Clinton in that wig. Do you have hot sauce in your purse? No, but I do feel the need to get a Kim Jong-un outfit. <laughs> yes! <laughs> you need one of those with and, this wig. And that velvet headband that she used to wear all in the in 90s. Purse? Yeah, Hillary carries that hot sauce with her wherever she goes. You know, you know that she does. And when she pulls it out, she affects a fake black accent because that's the way she does it. What had happened was, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Uh, child one was left with medical personnel for treatment because he told this officer that his two sisters were still at the house, and this officer went running over there. Um, at approximately 1143 hours, officers responded to the house and contacted Jody at the front door. She was on the phone when she answered the door and informed that she was speaking with her attorney. Officers pushed by her anyway to conduct a, conduct a protective sweep and to locate the two sisters who were said to still Straight be on. in the house. Yeah, get out of the way, Karen. It's time for us to... What are you guys doing here? Why are you in my house? <laughs> child two was found sitting in a bedroom walk-in closet on the main floor. I observed that child two's hair was cut short and had a similar appearance to redacted's. Her legs, arms, and face were slim, and she appeared to be malnourished. Mal These people need to train them to say malnourished. They always say malnutrition. I stay with two ch child two while officers completed the protective sweep of the house. Child two was very timid and would not speak to me or answer any questions. She would only nod and was very quiet when she uttered any words. Child two did not want to leave the walk-in closet and did not trust officers. Child two informed oh. me that she was hungry and would like a pizza. Once the protective sweep was completed, I was notified that no other persons were located inside the residence and one of the sisters was still not found. Officers located a safe door in the basement was, that was believed to be the entrance to a possible safe room. I left Child 2 with De Detective Pandoyo and responded to the Santa Clara Ivins Police Department. I obtained a search warrant for Jody's residence to obtain all evidence as it relates to child abuse and to search the house for any additional victims. Judge Court Judge Carlin Myers approved the search warrant. I responded to the house. Is that like the kind, if that lands on my desk as a judge, I want the hell yeah stamp. Yes. That's what I want. Yes. I want the <laughs> hell yeah, I approve this warrant stamp. Have at I, it. I want a big yes. hell yeah is what I want. But bam, <laughs> but bam, go get it, boys. Go get it. Run. I run. <laughs> I responded to the house and Lieutenant Studley served Jody with the search warrant. I returned to tend to, to child two as officers served the search warrant. I found that child two had been given and consumed an entire small pizza while I was gone. And while oh, being with detective good. Pandoyo, child two requested more pizza and ate two slices of a large pizza when it arrived. Can you imagine these officers like you want pizza? We're going to give you as much pizza as you want. Let's get another pizza in yeah. here, boys. 
We need like another Maria pizza. gets all the cake, she gets all the pizza. All the pizza. Oh, all yes. the cake and all the pizza. Damn. Child 2 asked me who called the police to the house. She thought it was a college student, Sherry. I her told sister. Her, oh, I told her that Child 1 had called, and she said she was surprised he would call the police. I informed Child 2 that I would have medical personnel respond to ensure she was healthy. Child 2 was concerned that Jody did not want her to go to the hospital. She was concerned that the medical personnel would give her a, uh, I can't say this word on YouTube, uh, a poke and told me the pokes can kill you. I informed her that they would check her vitals. Medical personnel responded for child two. At approximately 1535 hours, medical personnel arrived on the scene and intended to child two, refused to allow anyone to touch her. After a short period of time, she agreed to go to the hospital, but would still not allow anyone to touch her. Poor thing. Medical she got up personnel and walked out herself. Brought, brought the gurney to the front door, and Child 2 walked out to the gurney. Child 2 was loaded into the ambulance and transported to the hospital for medical care. Then the search was given for the, for the electronics. We've already, we've already read about that. I then met with Child 2 and found that Amanda Jocelyn, NP, and Julie Cole, RN, were speaking with her. I informed Child 2 that I would check on her later to let Amanda Jocelyn know if she needed anything. While at the hospital, Julie Cole gave me three evidence bags containing the clothes Child 1 wore when he came to the hospital. I gathered the items, and they have been logged into evidence as follows. One light blue long sleeve shirt, two black ankle socks, and one pair of gray underwear. I can't. I'm going to break down. This boy is, you know, near the age of my son, and I just, I yeah. am, I, I not he that he didn't it makes have any another difference. two weeks left. He didn't have another two weeks. These children were in no. mortal danger. In mortal it, danger, it's it's a miracle they were not killed. So this it, is more stuff of what was gathered as evidence. I think we already went over this, and so we don't need to do it again. This is all the evidence that was taken, and we already read that. Um, okay, I think we're at the end of this one. Thank God that was long. And let's remove this. Sorry, Mo, you were about to say something. Go ahead. I just, it's hard when you have kids this age. It's hard to imagine at all, at all, doing this to a child, to children, and then to be still self righteous and so fully stuck up your own rectum mm. that you cannot breathe air to you know i guess get the cognitive ability to see that you are wrong because jody's sentencing about uh about made me want to uh yeah start agility training if y'all know what i mean because mm -hmm. you know tables. the bailiffs might might get me after a first little bit but i'm a i'm a speed run <laughs> right, I only got one good try with CRPS, so I better make it good. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm funny. saying. We do a we do agility training. <laughs> you already know. I've been to that camp. All right, so there is a lot. There are a lot of videos, and yeah. I want to. I don't want to show anything on this that's going to get us in trouble. So I think I'm going to. I haven't reviewed these yet. So what I want to do is. Um, Oh, wait, these are blurred out. Okay, it does say that, that they are redacted. So let me see. Please move right. Wait, can I just open this? No, I'm going to try and open it in a new screen. That's what I want to do. So open in a new window. Yeah. No, it won't let me do that. Hmm. Wait, I learned this from someone the other day. It was MG, I think. Let me see if I can do this properly. What if I go like this and move it over here? All right, let's oh, try Oh, that this. should do it. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, watch me struggle and enjoy the show. What can I, I tell it. you? I love it. Well, love I it. can add nothing to this other than terrible advice, so... <laughs> I know how to do this. I have been shown how to do this and it's going to work because I say so. Here we go. Ah, oh, damn it. It didn't work. All right. So well, I don't yeah. know. 
I don't know if I can actually share this. If you'll hear the, maybe we don't need the volume though. Hold on. Let's see if this works. Let's see. I will stop screen and share screen window. Let's try this. I don't, to share audio. Yeah, you're not going to be able to hear the audio. That's the problem. I won't be able to have audio on this. Well, that's dumb. Like you can't hear that, right? Uh, no. No. You can't. You can't hear that. Okay. No. Um, Brad, where Brad. are you, Brad? I was about to say, it goatee. We need a little like where are Batman. You? I'm gonna. I'm, oh, there he is. Here he is. Wait, Brad, can you help me? <laughs> I'm struggling. I'm on the struggle bus. Brad, we know you're the backbone of the show. Yes. He might be in a meeting. Okay. All right. So, um, however, there, I mean, I think there, they are on YouTube. I think not all of these, but cause I'm getting these directly from the prosecutor's site. Um, so what I might I got do, a Reddit page all oh, that that stuff. Oh, you do. That's right. Yep. Can you send can you put the you can't send anything right now because your computer isn't working. I can just right. tell you what it is. The Reddit page? Yeah. All right. Okay, hold on. Reddit. 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 <laughs> okay, wait, I have to put on my I need my Reddit voice for this. Okay, R what? Um, all one word, Idaho alpacas. And that's not coming up. What did I spell? How did I, uh, did I spell it wrong? Two C's in alpaca. Oh yeah, I spelled it wrong. I think I spelled it wrong, so. <laughs> ADHD, uh, it all comes out the wash. Here's Brad, he's here. Oh God, Brad! I need you, I need like a I need a Brad signal, like a like the bat signal, but a Brad signal. Um, Just Brad. Just a giant goatee in the sky. So I'm yes. dropping the link, Brad. I'm dropping the link to the videos that I want to pull up mm -hmm. in the private chat, and I want you to tell me how to make them appear in a browser. I did this the other day. And it worked just by saving the file and then dragging the file to a browser screen, but it's not working today. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know why. So it's Brad. like when you get your hair done at the salon and she's able to get it all nice. And then you try to use that roll brush and the hair dryer at the right. same time. And you end up with just a brush yeah. stuck in your I, head. That was me this morning. Like I can get the front, but I can never do the back. Like I bet there's a wave in the back of my head. Is it, is it wavy? You probably turn Reddit really voice notice. off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. I forgot. Yeah. I mean, they're not very big files. You could just download them and then present them as a video file. Oh, duh. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I just needed All you to tell does. me that <laughs> because I didn't even think of that as an option. Yep. Of course, that makes perfect sense. Here we go. <laughs> so what's your name? Where she's she's just medium smart, okay. guys. But she said she lives over here. I was like, all right. It's like, well, I'm just on my, the phone with my sergeant right now. Like, we're going to try to find the kid for you. We need to identify that house. If there's two other kids there, we need to go do a security sweep of that house. And help them. 12 x 17 11. Can you head over here to the road? It looks hot there. Yeah, it does. Apparently, those kids may be even. All right, so that's the first video. Um, is he yeah, bringing Utah, a pizza? Is that what he's you, doing? Utah, I don't know. Utah, no, they haven't found her yet. They haven't oh, found okay. her yet. So oh, my bad. This is before they do the security sweep. So let me pull up this one. This is the next one. Uh, video file. There we go. I need to take this one down. Boy, it lets me share more than one video at a time. So this is the EMT worker who just walked by and said, I'm going to cry. And then she started oh my to cry. I'll take more if you want me to. Is that a deal? 
She right, said, so I'll do more if you want me to, because his wound smelled so bad. Mm. Mm. It, and he could have gone septic. I mean, um, I think AB Easily. put in there that, you know, your body doesn't have any reserves. You have an open wound that's not being treated. Oh, and just... literally, you could see all of his bones. Oh, God. He did not have much time left. Look, no. I get upset when my kids, like, fall down and right. get a scrape. Right, that's normal. You know, like, I, I don't understand this. I don't, I don't understand this. How do you start seeing your could kids as the enemy? As evil and, like... And how did she find such a, a kindred spirit in Ruby? You know, like to I think Ruby was her women. was her um, going to be her platform. Oh, it's just she awful. was going to she was a she was a marked person, I think, for financial but, exploitation. And she was she's tried to sign over her entire t channel to Jody for free. Oh, for the love of all that is. Hey, holy. Steph. Steph, I don't know if you want to watch this. It's just so yeah. awful. My sister's in the chat. Um, I'm about to bring up the ambulance footage of child one in the ambulance. If you don't think that you can handle this, you know, feel free to to tune You can't out for a see anything bit. bad, I don't think. No, it's blurred. It's blurred. But you can definitely get the picture. Oh my god. And they have they redacted out his voice. That's a kid? Yeah. You're not in trouble with me. Okay, we're just trying to figure out what's going on. Our main focus right now is you. Okay. The darkness oh, of his, his skin. Little snacks. And the reason why he's all like dark and dirty and stuff is because they were making him work, backbreaking work in the hot desert. And look at how stiff he is. He's no not water. Even, he's not even resting his head. Like he's so stiff and like, oh God, I I can't. He's a He's afraid to relax. I mean, well, he's also been hogtied. Well, yeah. Yeah, he's got rope burns on his wrists. Yeah. Um, and they're blurred. Look at his little bag of snacks. I can't. Can you How believe he walked to this? the neighbor's house? No. How do people do this? How does this happen? I'm I'm horrified by this. Who put the ropes on you? He's telling them because he deserved it. <sighs> These kids, are they ever going to recover from this? And meanwhile, the, the monsters who did this to them could be could get out in four years but on good behavior. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. It's hideous and Utah needs to seriously reconsider its uh, punishments for child abusers. And there should be a first degree felony for child abuse. I, I don't How understand is this why only second degree? I mean, because there is no, was there is, to be it. go ahead. There's only a first okay. degree felony for child SA in Utah. There's it, it, all other child abuse falls in second or, or below. And it's because we do not value children. Steph, they got 15 years each on four counts, 15 on each count, but they're not to be served um, consecutively. They're serving them concurrently or congruently. It's indeterminate concurrently. sentencing. Congru that means yeah. they'll be up for parole in four years. Right. And then every year. Right. So these kids will have to relive it every year if yep. they want her to stay in jail. This awesome. is finding... Child two in the closet. Hi, I'm a police officer. Oh. Are you going for the uni here? Hey. Oh, that's... You okay? Oh, my God. Is this just you in here? It's concurrently. They thought that's it was a little boy because of her hair. What's your name? I just have one. Where's your sister at? Contact one. You okay? Huh? You doing okay? Those little arms and her elbows sticking out. Oh, that's okay. Can you come with me though? We got hiding in the dark in a closet. She's outside with us. You take your time, but I'm in no hurry. 
I'm a police officer. Did you know that? I don't mean to hurt you at all. They were so patient with her. I know. That's four good. hours. They yep, sat there for four hours, hours with her. Yeah. You're okay. Do you need help? You want to come with your No? I'm not going to hurt you. I can't imagine the terror of not knowing who the hell to trust. And this guy is carrying like a giant gun. <laughs> Maybe I know, he tried to step back. He tried to step back. <laughs> Maybe put the yeah. gun on your back or something. So like this giant gun, you know, you're not walking into a room with this huge rifle. <sighs> I mean, if they secured well, the scene, could they have let the female EMT come in to try so, to talk to her? So, they did, so, she does. She comes in at some she point. Does. But that, but from having been in the military, that's the problem, is that if you are going into an unknown situation, having it on your back is the worst thing that can happen, because if anything is there, you don't have something to respond with quickly. Yeah. Because right. Even they if have no idea back, what they're going to find. Right. So you... Right. Yeah. You really need it on the front, and if the scene is clear enough to the point where you're now just doing basic investigation work, then yeah, you could swing it back. But if you're doing an initial sweep, there's no way that they're putting it on their back. Yeah, I don't. I think the sweep was still going on when he found her, and so the others continued what we just read. The others continued on with the sweep, and then he stayed with her. So, um, yeah. And unfortunately, while we pause here, I have to go get my youngest most feral and then hug the stuffing out of him. And he's like, Mom, why are you hugging me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but thank you for having me on. This is these kids need a voice because mm, this do. was so sanitized during the trial. Totally. There was really, no trial. It was just the pleading guilty well, in the sentencing. The pleading that, you know, this this needs to be told. This is this horror unfortunately needs to be exposed and sadly it, it's ugh. just these people yeah. are lower than the corroded dumpster water from 100 uh percent -huh, anyway. yeah i totally agree with you everybody make sure you get over to mo in the deep end i am going Thank to you, mo. I'm going to put You're her welcome. channel and please go and subscribe to her channel. She's criminally undersubscribed and uh, you've got to, you've got to go and check her out and mods. If you could help me by putting her link in the chat as well, that would, I'd appreciate yes. that. Bye Mo. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right. Mo's channel. Here you go. All right. Locals, don't be mad at me. I don't have you open now. I have too many things open, but I know you guys are in there and I will get to you in just a little while. I'll make sure I open it up and see you in a minute. I'm not here to hurt you. I just want to make sure you're okay. And I get you if you're scared. I would be too. Okay. You want to come with me? Okay, I so think that's... it took about two hours for her to say one word. God, yeah, she, he said that she would only like nod. Um, she said she was nervous, that's what she said. Finding he, uh, he's going to say, okay, here's another, here's one I don't think I've seen. Let's save this in here, try and pull that up. All right, this is the video clip of the officer in the closet with her, um, and he tells her he's just going to sit with her. Yeah, that was nice to be this thing. It's okay if I just sit here with you. We don't have to say anything. Oh. If you don't want to. Okay. Look at her arms with a lot of God. I know, I know. I know.
And this one is the one with the pizza. Steph asked, did you guys watch Ruby get the handcuffs on? Not yet. It's okay if I just sit here with you. Okay, wait, this was the same one. Hold on. I thought I I thought I had the new one. Huh. It didn't save? Oh, it's still saving. I guess that one is longer. It's still saving. I'll do a shorter one. Um How about this one? She starts speaking to him. These are some of these, the longer ones just take longer to download. All right, here we go. Because they're longer. This is, this is so awesome. Okay. There's nothing I know you want to talk about. It's okay to talk to me. Are you scared? She said, I'm nervous. Yeah. Yeah, I'm nervous. They blurred or they um, bleeped out the, the boy's voice. I'm surprised they didn't with her. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like this evidence, we didn't, why didn't we know all of this? Why was it why so Why didn't they release it before? Yeah, because people would have been outside protesting to put these oh two Lord. in prison for right. life. And instead we were given like this weird, some of it didn't even sound like abuse. It was like, oh, she made this one eat chicken instead of lasagna. I remember, I was like, what a weird thing to put in a, a child abuse affidavit like where was the stuff about I, I don't know i feel like we were completely misled about some of the about these details we didn't know any of this well and it's so much more complicated with the jody aspect and her manipulation and her patterns and all that they didn't talk about any of that stuff no and I want to know why it was so sanitized. I want to know why this was kept from the public. And I, I have my why suspicions. Do, why do they want to cover up for these people? It, because that's how it feels. It feels like this was some kind of cover up. So and she got ninety five percent of all the church referrals. You don't. You don't get that kind of p power. Oh, she had complete. Uh, she had the bishop. The bishop was. Yep was giving her name out she had and in mormon <sighs> culture you listen to your bishop that is just what you do yeah the chat is saying it's because they're mormons lds has power Absolutely. they covered it up just like they wouldn't televise that lori vallow trial right they don't want people to know the extent of this abusive i'm sorry but i'm calling it out it's a cult and i'm sick of this it's and a I'm cult sorry, and it's a I'm sorry it's if a you're grift a mormon. too I'm sorry if you're a Mormon, but there are way too many of these stories coming out now of this severe child abuse and weirdness going on in these Mormon cults and stuff. And I'm I'm calling it out. Thank you, Thomas. We helped your brother. And we got him some help, too. And that's what we want to do for you. That's what we want to get you some help, too. We are safe. We will not hurt you, and we won't Aww. do anything to hurt you. They've redacted out some of what she's saying. Hmm. Oh, sign. Oh, they're getting. She's talking to them. Oh. I think she. I think she finally she's told him she's go. hungry. Or, she's, or no, they, this yeah, was, maybe this is when this she was gets after up and walks pizza. Out. Yeah, this yeah. is after pizza. Oh, this poor thing. Oh. She barely has the strength to do it. All right, we are going to move on to the interviews because I can't watch any more of these children. I can't. There's more, but I, I can't. I've seen enough. Um. 
first entry into house. Let's watch this because this is where Jody uh, pulls a Karen at the front door. Mm -hmm. Um. Save. Uh, that's going to take a, a little bit because that is a longer video. So let's see. There's also, oh, the safe room one is really weird too. We'll definitely get that saved. Creepy. Um, what else? There's. Kevin gave two interviews. Our barefoot at cemetery? What? Yeah, that's so bizarre. What is? Hmm? And I don't know who filmed that either. Was this found on their computer? I don't know. Possibly. Oh my god! So you're right. There was video. They videotaped what they did. You got to be kidding me. If Ruby wrote it down. It's no stretch to believe they recorded it. This is setting very what is extraction i don't know what this one is i'm just gonna save it and we'll see all right it looks like opening the safe room is downloaded so we'll get that one up now the safe room is so weird you guys it's so weird and i think they don't there's no the sound on this weird there's no sound on this, so we can just talk over it. This one has no, for, for whatever reason, they wanted what the officers were saying blocked out of this. That thing that looks like a safe, that's it. That's the panic room, and it says Liberty on the door. Liberty safe is a common right. safe manufacturer. But I just think it's weird. Like, it's a weird um, juxtaposition for what's it's going on It's a weird here. door choice, that's for sure, when there's nothing valuable behind it. Mm-hmm. They're going to shoot just... the door? No. No. Oh. They're, they don't know what they're going to find in here. How did they get the door code? Well, he had a code. I don't know how he got, he could have, they might have been able to get it from the manufacturer if she wouldn't. I think it so. Code. Because the manufacturers all have an override code, I think. There's a bathroom in there? Yep. It's a safe room. It's a panic room. It's a safe room. I don't room know if that staff. other room is out there. No, this is the panic room. This is the room you yeah. run to if someone's in your house or whatever, or there's so. It's or like, you're torturing children, or, or you're torturing kids. kids. Yeah. Nothing in the refrigerator. Nope. No That's food. The no food. The no fridge water. Isn't even on. And this is May where they. Be. This is where they find the ropes and the um, handcuffs. Because if if that you he open got a, out of if you open a freezer that's been on instant condensation comes out you're right so when he right. opens the freezer and no condensation came out what were they worried about i think they're just trying to see if there's another that guy the way he opened that the, door, the way he opened it. the way he opened that he was like like he was scared something was gonna pop I know. out watch watch him watch watch how he opens it he's like please don't let there be a head in there and yeah Look, he's like, like he's worried that it's going to explode or something. Look at this. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> he's like. <laughs> but the thing is, is he's got his hand on his gun that's in his waistband on his backside. So he's open the refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, but he might have thought it was booby trapped, you know, like so. rigged with something or. They want to make sure that there's nothing behind it, but. Yeah, if it's right. a safe room, there ain't nothing. There's not going to be any room back there, unless the, the only thing I can think of is that if you design a safe room, then you design some kind of access method to get out of the safe room in the unlikely Correct. event that something is going on. So they're trying to get the fridge out because you might have to get move the fridge in order to get access to the exit panel. Mm -hmm. She did have an an escape route that was like out through the roof, out onto the roof. But that fridge is has power, but it's obviously not on because one, there's nothing being stored in it. They pushed it back in. When they start going through the drawers, that's when they find the ropes and 
the handcuffs. It'd, it'd be weird that that yeah, they're checking for false walls and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But it's weird that they would um, mute all of the audio from. Yeah, well, they must have been saying things about the investigation that they yeah, don't that's what I was want, thinking. that they don't want public. And you know, what's they're... weird is that these do not the all the video that was released do not appear to include the interviews. I'm not seeing the interviews in here. This is just like body cam footage and house stuff. It's what not... a weird spot for a washer and dryer. She's got one in her bedroom too. Bedroom closet. But in the okay. middle of the room where no hookups are. Right. I yeah, I don't know. But it's yeah. on a gym mat, like it's designed to be there. Oh, I'm just now seeing what you're talking about. I thought you meant that other fridge. Yeah, the one out there in the middle of nowhere, I agree. So they found the stuff in the bottom of the drawer and nobody went to touch it because they're probably waiting to get um, cameras to identify it. And evidence bags. All right. Does anybody out there? Oh, Sarah, you probably know on your I was. Did I find your your Reddit? I don't know. I did not. It's not coming up for me. Can you send me a link? I don't know why it's not coming up for me, but it's the search I can result. tell you how to spell it. You did, and it didn't work. Huh. Yeah, it, it's not coming up. I can do that. Because I need to find the full um, interview I, videos. Yeah, I got everything you want, girl. Hold on. Yeah, I figured you did. Yeah. Because we got to start those because I'm running out of time. It's 2 30. Okay. I'm going to go as fast as I can here. All right. Oh, did they finish already? Did they pull the ropes out of the drawer? Maybe that's a no, different one. No, they didn't. One. It's left in the drawer. Oh, that's weird. Okay. So they they didn't go in to, talk, to grab them because they wanted to get evidence bags and to videotape oh. them as they lay. Gotcha. Oh. Um, <laughs> all right. Here's that strange video of the child barefoot in the cemetery. I don't know what this is about. <laughs> Is that music on that video? Yeah. Yes. What the hell? It's so like they're videotaping sitting... him while he's working in a cemetery. They had him cleaning a cemetery with bare feet on hot rocks while they're playing rock music. You got to be kidding me. I. God. Yeah, there are no words. This is disgusting. Are you sending it in? Yes, the email? I am actively doing that. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. For let's, let's let's um. So there is new. While we're waiting for that, there is new information in the Laura Owens v. Clayton Eckerd case, um, which I will not be going over in today's stream. But I just want to tell you that there has been a new motion filed. It is a motion for. Hold on. Where is it? It was like a motion for consolidation or something? Or... It is a motion for a joint hearing. Um, and let me check my email and see if I have the filing. Um, hold on. Uh, the, my sources tell me that it is going to be, a re it's basically a request for the judge to vacate the um what do you call that? A restraining order yeah. to vacate the restraining order that Laura Owens got against Clayton Eckerd because it was based on a lie. Right. You're playing. Okay. There it is. I see that you've sent it and I am pulling it up now. Yes. All right. I'm not kidding. Everything you ever want to know is there. All right, so tell me which bit, where do I, where do I start? Which video should I start with? We want, uh oh, hold I, on. This, hold on, school's calling. Sure.
do 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 Sorry about that. My wife. I don't have any special entertainment skills. <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see. Um, I kind of want to go through. Oh, there's me. All right. That was the weirdest call ever. So I picked up the call, but it was just a recorded message from the nurse. My kid's not feeling good, but how, wh why would they send me a recorded message? Everything's going AI now, girl. I know. Everything's crazy. It. Everything. <laughs> was this the same one that went to the doctor this morning or? No, a different one. Oh, Andrew's geez. Andrew's got a nosebleed now and stomach ache and I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Um, Are you poisoning your children? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, definitely not that. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. Is this today or tomorrow? Now the other one is texting me. I, I, every, what? It's going to hell in a handbag. School is, school is almost over. There's no, <laughs> there's no point in me going to get him now because he's, it's literally, he's getting on the bus and at any moment. Um, oh, Megan won't pick up her sick child. Oh, shit. Well, yeah, why go pick them up when they're going to deliver them to your door? <laughs> exactly. Oh, my God. They're all texting me at the same time. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it. So, Megan, you want me to go through some super chats for you? While yeah, you deal can with you that? please do that? I'll be right back. All right. Suzanne Parrish, thank you for the nine ninety nine blanket was for comforting through all this horrible mess that was missed on my chat. Sorry. So who's this talking about when they gave the the little boy his blanket for comfort? Um, M one sixty nine says it's consecutive sentence. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we 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 goofed saying concurrent and it. Uh, Chris Clements, thank you for the $10. They believe that the child's soul is in danger, so whatever harm comes to the body doesn't matter so long as they save the kid's soul. To make good people do horrible things takes religion. No, because the there's definitely people who are so sociopaths who um, do terrible things to kids. Religion, um, some people use religion as a justification to do terrible things to people, but uh, it should never be used uh, like this. It's terrible. Um, D in Florida, thank you for the five dollars. This is exactly why they need to save the child in the weekday. The Hales case. Love you, Megan. Yeah, thank you. Love you too. Uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to go over this is because I feel like there are parallels between these cases. Um, not that I believe or have any reason to believe that there's like violent abuse going on in that in the what the Hales case. Uh, um, it's just that the Internet saw something in those pa in that passenger eight in those videos and they said something and everyone ignored mm -hmm. them. CPS ignored them. Police ignored them. And like in this case with Florida, with the turtle purgatory and what's going on with Lynette Preston, the internet is saying, we think there's a problem and everyone's ignoring it again, you know, be, be very careful system ignoring when the, inter when a bunch of people online are telling you, Hey, we think there's a problem here. I don't, this is not malicious. No one is doing it to be malicious. No one is trying to like hurt anyone in this situation. People are trying to say, hey, hey, wake up. There's a kid living in a shed with no air conditioning in Florida and she's supposedly medically fragile and there's poop buckets and there's, this doesn't, glass on the ground and nails and things. And like, this doesn't seem like a, like a good environment for a child. Can you please go check it out? And they're just like, what? They're like, no, it's fine. Yeah. All right. I've just, I don't like it. I feel you. I feel you. I'm sorry. I'm having trouble finding the interviews. I don't know what's wrong with me. There's a lot of videos here. Where is, where are the video, where are the interviews? What Siri. do you look at in particular? Um, the interviews of Kevin and also Jody and uh, Ruby. Uh, Ashley Clute, thank you for the $2. Videos 15 to 19 are the interviews titled Child Abuse. 
Oh, all right. Well, then in that case, oh, well, that's, why did they title them that way? What a stupid way to title them. Ted, I agree. Well, I didn't even want to open them. Who's going to be looking for that? Because I didn't want to open them because they literally say child abuse on them. That's all they say, child abuse. And it's like, uh, I don't want to open that on my computer. Right. The hell is it? All right. I am downloading them now. And Sarah Anderson, thank you for the $2. God bless these babies. I think my computer has given up on downloading. It's like I've, I'm doing too much. <laughs> I think that's just your, your that poor uh, point to point Wi Fi system. I don't know what that means, but you're probably right. I your, have your no repeaters. reason to disbelieve you. <laughs> I have no reason to disbelieve you, Brad. I believe everything you're saying. <laughs> uh, okay, so they're still not downloaded yet. All right, let's take a look at here's a video. Um, where did it go? I just had it open in front of me. Here it is. Here's a video of a look inside Jody's house, which is like a news clip. So I'll pull this up. It's a two minute while we're waiting for the videos to download. We will look Our inside compound. Jody's compound. And these are hosted on a government computer. So you're basically talking about something run by hamsters. So <laughs> that makes sense. The home of Jody Hildebrand, where it all <laughs> Yeah, Brian, that's right. And going through the video, it was sad video to watch it unfold itself. However, one thing I will say, in these, these new release videos, you can see the moments where police and first responders first step into the home where they end up fighting. That is a weird-looking oh. microphone he's holding. Step out of the house. No, I'm not just step out step of the house. Step out of the house. Step out of the house. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're just going to step out of the house. Wait a minute. How do you come in my house? Right there. Look, they brought into my house. How did they come into your house? I'll tell you, ma'am. A little boy escaped from it, and he's clearly seriously wounded and injured, and he told police officers there's two other children inside. That's what we call, by the book, exigent circumstances. They can now kick in your door. They can break every window trying to rescue the children inside. This this woman kills me with her. Do you have a warrant? No, you don't need a warrant for this, ma'am. Is there anybody else in the house? Yes. Two kids? There's a little girl. Just one? She's right over here. Okay. How old is she? She'll be 10. Nine. Okay. According to the time on the body camera footage, they discovered the child in a closet about seven minutes after they had made their way into the home. This is the moment they found the little girl. You come in, my buddy. I am a police officer. Are you okay? You need here? Hey, you okay? Is this just you in here? I'm Sergeant Tobler. What's your name? A few minutes pass by, and Sergeant Tobler sits down with a girl, yeah, trying to speak with her. There they are, the handcuffs. It's okay if I just sit here with you. We don't have to say anything if you don't want to. Okay. What looks to be a few hours later, according to the uh -huh. time on the body cam footage, the little girl is still in the closet. The Santa Clara Ivans Fire Rescue Team is even attempting to talk with the girl, but nothing. You don't want to talk? Okay. There's nothing at all you want to talk about? It's okay to talk to me. This situation left several first responders feeling very emotional. You could just see and feel the emotions that those were horrible. They're all traumatized from life. Yep. Yep. A lot of therapy right, is going to be like needed. It looks like I've got. Huh. Yep. Now, I don't know what this, what this is. This is one of the videos that downloaded. It's the interview. 
There's no audio. Really? Yeah, so it can't be an interview. Oh, here we go. So she took her body cam camera off. Hi, Vicky, how are you? I'm going to have you I don't come know. sit on this side for me. Yeah, I don't know what she's doing. Is this your yeah, order? interview room. <laughs> this this stuff water. freaks we'll me out. out. We also have snacks if you need anything to eat. So I know I introduced myself to you earlier, but my name is Detective Bates, and this is Sergeant Tobler. We're just here to talk to you about kind of a few things involving your kids. So this first, is where you immediately you say, I need a lawyer, and I'm not saying nothing. Well, well she, she does, but... The, the idea is quite thing literal is, about it. She has no emotion whatsoever. And I think that she really pulled a fast one on the judge with all that fake crying in court about being regretful. She's not regretful at all. This is this a woman. terrifying red flag. The way she looks and presents right now. She is cold as ice. This yep. one. Controlling her emotions like nobody's business. Uh, sociopathy. Yeah. Do you want to talk to me about where you live, or? The slow blinking is killing me. How many yeah, kids that's you extraordinarily have? creepy. So we just spoke with your husband, and he said you guys have six kids. Are those all together? Are those all your kids? I can wait all day. She's like so mean mugging him. It's too. up to you if you want to talk yeah. to us about mm -hmm. what's going on. Would you feel more comfortable talking to one of us? That's so infuriating. Or if you feel more comfortable talking to him, I can step out. I'll wait till I have a lawyer. Okay. So you don't want to talk to us at all. See, now, once somebody, though, tells you as a cop, I want to wait till I have a lawyer, that's time to say, OK, and get up and walk out of the room. I yeah. don't like it that they stay and they keep on pressing. I, I don't even though she's a monster, I don't like it. The police do that. They're not supposed to They did to it do more that. to Jody than they did to her. Yeah, they did. They tried because they could tell she wanted to talk. Mm hmm. Do you want to answer that? Are you, you don't want to talk to us about anything? Man, that slow blinking is so weird. She's holding on to the last bit of power and control yes. that you have. This is just your chance to tell us we're just trying to get your side of the story. Um, so it's your chance to yeah. do that. Stephanie, she just said, I'm going to wait till I talk to my attorney. So they should have just gotten up and walked out at that point. That's up to you. But no harm, it, no foul. She didn't talk. But, but here's the funny thing. By having asserted her want or want or desire to talk to her lawyer and the cops continuing to push her, if she says things after that, then that's basically waiving your mm -hmm. um, uh, declaration for a lawyer. I know, but they're not supposed to do that. They're right. supposed to stop. Right. And I mean, I'm not asking any criminal questions if you don't want to talk to us. Just let us know and we'll, we'll be done. She already said it. I don't know why he's I making it. She's going to say that. Yeah, I've already told you. You want a lawyer? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Easy enough. Thank you. Is there anything else I can get for you in the meantime? I got the water. Do you need a bathroom break or anything like that? No? Okay. All right, that's the end of her interview. All right, we've got, um, where's the next one? Okay, I think the others are still downloading, it looks like. <sighs> yeah, four minutes left on one. 
Yeah, they're big. Kevin's files. second interview is the craziest thing I've ever heard. Well, that's the one that I'm. I don't. I wish they had labeled them properly. I so, know, right? So I knew which one was which. I mean, if you go nice. back to that that Reddit page, I know there's a link, and it says like all of the evidence, and like I think it's timestamp. Is that a law and crime one? It, yeah, it may be. Because I did watch that one, but I didn't see the second interview on that. I watched the entire two-hour thing, and I never saw Kevin's second interview. It may have been audio only. I'm not sure. Hmm. Hmm. Why is this? You think it's called all of the evidence? Which video are yeah. you trying to go through? I'm looking on her Reddit page that has, oh, is it worst pieces of evidence to come out or is it? Nope. Ep, nope. Okay. New evidence Keep released. It, it'll say like all of the evidence. Hmm. I know there's a lot of links. All jail calls. Those are good. We could play those. Yeah. Oh, geez. Mentally unstable. No. Yeah, they're not. I'm not seeing it. If you just keep going down, you'll find it. I promise. It's hard to be in the witness protection program and run a Reddit page, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um. Still nothing? Mm-mm. No, but I do want to play this. So why don't we play this one? Let me move to, because her jail calls are bizarre. Who's? Uh, oh. Uh, Ruby's them. weirder for sure. She has like rubies. something just happened to her or something. Please see the truth. I know it's obscured. I'm, I'm. Where I see the facts, I see the truth, and that's what I'm. That's what I'm gathering. You know my heart. What are they charging you with? You know my heart. Second, yep, that's what she said. Second degree felony for child abuse. Two charges of second degree felony child abuse. Yeah. He's processing this in real time. Wow. Uh, that's very serious. I have. It's interesting. I had the prompting over the last month to read Mr. Frankel. <laughs> like, I was reading him. And the worst part was not knowing the end. He said those who, he said he had a room, a, an inmate that's man search for meaning, and he was a prisoner in World War II. And he said the worst part and the greatest bringing of depression was not the lack of food and it wasn't the weather oh, conditions, but it was not knowing how long it would last. So I think I was prepared for this. I do feel strong mm -hmm. and I feel calm. And you know what? They They may... Adults have a really hard time understanding that children can be full of evil and what that takes. To fight what? It. You've seen uh, fight evil. No. Wow. The person you're fighting. Ma'am, children are not full of evil. Children cannot be full of evil. That's ridiculous. Well, she no thinks child. that stealing is um, grabbing a drink from the water hose without asking. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh my God! How come we didn't know this before her sentencing? This was I want to know that kept, too. It was all kept under wraps, and the prosecution like violated the rights of the people to know about this case, and they covered up for this abuser. Why wasn't this on the record before her sentencing, so that people could go down to that courthouse and protest and say, "You better put her in jail Church. for life." 
the church. Why would the church want to cover this up? Why wouldn't the church want because to say, get rid of these Because 95% of people. their referrals went to Jody. They'd have mm. to explain that one. I know. I've read some of the diary, Mama Ames. It's terrible. Maybe we should it just is. step right to it. I, I feel like there's so much here that I'm never going to get through it in one stream. You're My not. day just didn't no, work you, out. You don't, have, you don't have to either. Uh, well, I would like to get further than this. Um, well, I'll just keep yeah, playing it, this. But it's up. heavy. I mean, yeah. Like something it's not. And you've been there. You know that. And she's and trying so to manipulate him again. I don't know who are going to see the truth. So I'm calm about this, and I just pray that you'll hang in there. You have well, one minute remaining for this call. I think I can call back. But yeah, but just in case, I'm, I'm preparing to step up and fight for the children. They've been taken. And they're going to be, there's going to be a hearing in the next couple of days here in Provo. I'm sorry, I just, I signaled to, to just, will you say that one more time? Stephanie, these women are in a Mormon cult. It, it, the religious overtones are that she's been either brainwashed into this bizarre um, belief system. But, but really what this is, is they're using religion as an excuse to abuse kids. They're child abusers using religion as an excuse to beat these children. And Jody and is Jody, exploiting everyone emotionally, religiously, financially. Psychologically, financially. Every way you can be tortured or abused, she's doing it. Gaslighting. Uh, okay, lady, good question. You keep saying the church covered everything up. No, I'm saying the prosecution did. And what exactly did they cover up? All of this evidence. This evidence mm -hmm. was not released until after the sentencing of these two women, until after they were allowed to plead down. They were and allowed why? to they were allowed a plea bargain that gave them only 15 years. And you those of you who are reporting in the chat that it's consecutively is you're wrong. It's concurrently. I don't know where you're reading it. And if you read it somewhere, then they are reporting it wrong. They got 15 years four counts each, 15 years on each count that will be served at the same time, not consecutively. So no, they did not get 60 years each. They got 15 and they're up for parole in four. It is I not consecutively. Everybody. Linda, it is not consecutive. Please trust me. I watched. He's right. I am right. The, the, the chat does not believe me. Hold on. Rule well, number one, Megan's always right. And the one thing to think about, um, I went to, well, this conference for this vendor out in um, Salt Lake City. And Salt Lake City was started by a group of Mormons traversing across the country to find what they believe to be their holy land and founded Salt Lake City. And that city grew up from there. So... There is a significant population of Mormons in Salt Lake City and Utah, really. Yeah, well, Utah, really. And they, uh, if there are those that believe that um, this cult that they're in is worth defending, then uh, the justice system or whatnot will find ways to allow them to. Um, get off easy and and you're it's going to be done in such a way that you're not going to be able to find it it yeah, won't be it's, transparent okay. at all all right i figured it out this is why we're having difficulty understanding this they're go she got they both got consecutive terms but the sentence was one to 15 years they could get one year for each count that's, that's what i mean they could That's be the problem. Look at it, it's one to 15 year terms, and you're right, it's consecutively. So you're supposed to serve them one after the next, but they, yep. they're not going to get 15 years per chart. I'm telling you, they're not. They're going to get mm -mm. released in four years. They're going to get possibly, they're going to be up for parole in four years. They do one year, they go in for hearing, and they get it 
they say no we're we're done with this one they do another year they do another right. hearing bring traumatized right. all the victims all over again one to 15 years not even 15 years one to 15 years one to what kind of a sentence is that it's crazy well, that's I the confusion. I want to know why they dropped That's the confusion. Charges. That's why I had this concurrently in my head because I figured out as soon as they gave the sentence, I was like, oh my God, one to 15 years. They're not going to max out on this. Yeah, they max out at 30 based on the law. So the maximum time they could serve if they do it consecutive is 30 years. But there's no way that's going to happen. It's the dumbest sentence ever. How can you say that a prison term can be anywhere between one and 15 years? You know, damn well, it's not going to be 15. So they'll serve a year and then they'll throw out that one. They'll say, you're done on that one. And then they start serving the next year. They'll be done on that one in a year and then done on the, on the third one in a year or two and then done on the fourth one in another year. It's crazy. It is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. It is. Utah, you're out of your minds. I, I mean, it, you're just, it's, it's, mm. it's very hard to reconcile seeing all that and, and then hearing what, what sentence that they're, they're facing. It's, it doesn't add up. The math doesn't math. Well, perhaps though, perhaps now that we've seen the evidence here, perhaps the parole board will not have the choice then to deny parole and, and, make her serve the maximum amount of time because I pray to you, God they get every bit of that. You can write to the parole board. People can write to them and tell them, do not parole these women. Can but they I show don't, up and support? Yeah, you can. When they could, you just have to pay attention to when it comes up because they don't announce those, the ones they want to get away with. It's not like they'll announce it. I, I don't even know. Would know. Becca, Becca, I don't even know how it works. Do they deny every year, every year she's up? I have no idea. I don't know how it works. How do you even determine a one to 15? Who determines how many years? I thought it was the judge, you know, but imposing a, you get one to 15 years per count, but I'm not going to tell you how many years. That's yeah. crazy. Dumbest thing I've ever heard of. And they also do things like based on the prison population, uh, if they're getting an influx of people that they're putting in prison, they'll say, well, who can we um, let yep. go so we can make room? Right. And I'm sorry, the, part of the problem here is that it's women. If these were two men that did this, there's yep. no way that they would have been given a sentence one to 15 years. No way. No way. Women can be just as awful as men. Hell, this is worse, if you ask me. These because women, of all of the manipulation. These women get, get, they get off easy because they're women. Because yep. Ruby Frankie has a pretty face. People don't want to believe that she's a monster. Mm-hmm. Well, we know after different. Four, okay, now. so. Chris says after four years, they will get a yearly review in which they were either to approve or deny for parole. Okay, this is making more sense. Correct. So they have Correct. they have to serve, to serve four the years minimum that four. would be needed Correct. for each term. I mean, for each right. sentence, each charge. So after four years, they get a yearly review. So every year, the victims, the victims' families, the, yep. the, the public has to contact this freaking parole board every year after four years to tell these people not to let them go. That's so And who's upsetting. on the parole board? I would love to know that. Probably a bunch of LDS Church people, leaders, maybe? Cult members. Mm-hmm. 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 At the very minimum, Ruby Frankie ought not to be let out until all of her children reach the age of adulthood. Agreed, 100%. So that she cannot go to a court and try to get visitation and parental rights. Her parental rights ought to be they severed They should go ahead and terminate her parental they rights. They should terminate. They should terminate immediately. Yeah, CPS, this one's an easy call for you. Yeah, this one is not hard. Nobody's got Munchausen. <laughs> Nobody's got Munchausen in this one, is right. <laughs> Not complex. No. Just sadistic. 
All right. So let me ask the chat and you, Sarah, actually, sure. what do you want to do? We've got time for like one more thing. So should we look at the journal in the handwriting? Do you want to look at that or do you want to go to the uh, one of the interviews or should we keep listening to the jailhouse calls? Oh, that's tough. I can't. I, I Since I'm on my phone, I can't see the handwriting, but um, okay, so it's that's worth out. looking at. It's worth looking at the journal entries, though. I know, but I think that's going to be an entirely different stream. Yeah. Maybe, okay, I got you. You're going to need can, beer and, or alcohol. Yeah. To, to We're going to need them. to get your computer working so you can see it on the big <laughs> screen for that one, Sarah, because I want your opinion on her handwriting. Well, I can look at it, uh, you know, okay. offline. Yeah. Look at her journal handwriting. I'll send you the link to it if you don't have it. Um, and then we can do another stream about that. So sure, should sure. we do yeah. an inner, should we do one of the, I want to do Kevin's interview. That's I what do I want to do. do Kevin's too. If I can Either find Either one it. of his. All right. So that's Jody and we don't care. Do we care about that? Let's see. Child, what's this one? How long? I think Kevin's is still downloading, but we can pull up Jody's right now. Yeah, it looks like the those child abuse videos, they're bogging along from mine, too. Now contrast this to Ruby's behavior. Water, sex. Doing all right? Can be expected. How do they look How so similar? Six years. Six years? The same house? Wow. You married? Same. Where'd you move from? He's in county. Okay. And how long were you up there for? I'm a little nervous. <laughs> You're that. You know, to be honest with you, if I was sitting over there, I'd be a little nervous too. So don't don't worry about it. We're just here to talk, to get your side. And right now we're just asking you just two cool questions. I can only live here. We want thing. to get to know you. <laughs> Watch my detective movies. <laughs> how are you? Which one's your favorite? <laughs> Me too. You can't, honestly, I, I sit there and I'm married and I sit there and watch those with my wife and I say, that, like, we don't, that's not how we do it. Babe. That's not right. So don't take, there's some good ones out there, don't get me wrong. But most of them are, are probably a little off base. We're not as mean. I won't get up and beat you up. We don't do that. <laughs> We just want to get to know you a little. So if you just kind of want yeah, to sure. about no, yourself you don't. And what brought you down here and... So I trust my attorney. He said, don't say anything. And I said, I have nothing to hide. And he's like, I know that. But just let me be there with you when we talk. So uh, uh, you guys seem nice people. Yeah. I'm not mm -hmm. You guys seem things. nice people. It's really difficult. This is really, if you knew all the pieces, I think you'd have a lot of empathy for well, what's going on. That's and really what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. And you're an adult. And... The thing about our interview, if we ask you any questions that you don't want to answer, you can just tell us, I don't want to answer that question. But we do want to have a basis and an understanding of what's going on in that home or what went on up north that brought them into your home. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to share any of that and you don't want to answer any other questions, that's okay. I, I'd like to just tell you. But I don't, I don't know who you are. I don't know if you're going to flip my words. They're cops. They're the know. police. And that's the good they thing about They are absolutely cameras. going to flip your what word. Do you mean, <laughs> what do you mean you don't know who they are? And they're cops. What do you mean? I don't know who you are. Well, they're sitting in front of you with badges and name <laughs> tags, lady. Everything, it's pretty much double recorded, audio, video. Double recorded. And it's for the safety of, <laughs> for you and for us because we don't want to flip your words. And this will all be pretty much right there to support you. So we're not going to use anything attorney, against you. be so insistent that. So this is where the rule of completeness comes in, folks. When you're in court and, and you're sitting in the defendant's aisle, you have the ability to say, do not play just a clip of this video because we want the rule of completeness to show everything that's going on because they will absolutely cut and splice videos in order to feed their narrative. Mm -hmm. He's an honest, good man, goes to church, I trust him, why would he say that to me then? I don't know. She just threw the word church know, randomly in there. To be honest. Well, I'm just well, saying he's, he's, a, he's, he's a good, good honest man. Yeah, and know. I'm an honest person as well, so we get along great. Right. And he just said, yeah. do not say anything. Maybe just as an attorney, they just... They always say that. They always want to be with their client, I'm not sure. But like I said, at any time, if you don't want to answer a question, you don't have to. 
So the ball's really in your court on what you do want to answer and what you don't. So, well, I think it, it looks bad that I don't want to answer anything, but it's not because I'm trying to be difficult. I'm really hanging on what he told me to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who's your attorney? Adam, Adam, Adam. Uh, it's Bob not Adam Paul B, that's for Brothers sure. Is he, is he local? Yeah. Old Bing. Um, um, the street of the town hall is. Oh, they all have the same name. The whole yeah. reason we're sitting here today is we just we there's a lot of questions we have that we just maybe have misunderstandings that we just mm -hmm. need to clarify. And I know, and I'd love to tell you if he were here. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know what's going to happen with what I say. You know. Yeah. I, I watched, I'm a psychologist. I've watched people flip things all the time. I could <laughs> so tell. I She's a psychologist. I, I and she allowed this it. to happen to kids? She orchestrated it all. Well, if you're not willing to answer any of the questions about yourself, would you be willing to answer any questions maybe about Ruby or Kevin that you could help us understand? We just honestly want to understand what what their dynamic is, what happened to the children, what caused their separation. Right. And after talking to Kevin, it sounds like you know a lot about their dynamic mm -hmm. and their relationship. So if you could help us understand that at the least, that would be awesome. And that's nothing incriminating towards yourself because it's not pertaining to you. So if you could help us understand that. Jody, we're, we're going to do this. You asked for your attorney, and we'll, we'll leave it with that. We'd like to maybe talk to you later when you have your attorney here present. Absolutely. And, he, and we'll go he that made around. an appointment at 4 she, on he made Friday. An appointment here. With, at your. Talk to the, to the officer okay. and said, Can we make a time? And he said out loud, Do not talk to them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I'll, I'll talk and see if we can schedule that, and maybe that's just something we we just do with your attorney. Okay. Do you have any questions for us? Or anything we can answer in the meantime? Yeah. What do you know? No. Okay. No. All right. Appreciate your time. Well, uh, I'm gonna have you hang tight in here, and then we'll come back and get you, and we'll be on our way. Okay. I think part of her really wants to ask, um, am I being arrested? Well, they're not letting her go. No, they aren't. <laughs> She's staying there until the attorney comes. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right. Um, I didn't, I did not, I made a mistake. I, um, I didn't have rumble chat open and I guess I missed a couple rants and now that I opened it, they're gone. Uh, so if I missed your rant in rumble, just retype it without a tip and I will read it and, and tag her. Yeah. Well, I've got it open in front of me now. So sorry. All my windows closed when I had the tech problem at the beginning of the show. So I had to reopen everything and it took me the entire show to get everything reopened again. Oh, um, because I wasn't, because I'm trying to concentrate on doing this and then I forgot. Concentrating card. Yeah. Concentrating card. Focus. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I have Kevin's second interview. The first interview is not all that interesting. We don't have to watch it right now. I want to watch this. I want to listen yeah. to the second one. The second one, I guess, is where all the stuff happens. So in the first one, all you need to know is that he appears to know nothing. And when he is told that his son is in the condition that he's in and his daughter's in the condition that he's in, he he looks completely taken aback. He can't take it in. He doesn't think it's real. He can't believe it. Slidey Pie had sent a $2 rant, says maybe a little off topic, but you missed my rant the other week. My daughter-in-law informed me she couldn't get her son's records from an appointment because he's 14. Yeah. WTF, he's a minor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're doing that now. In New York, I think the age is 12. They have you, Your kid has to sign what? a... You, you have, they have to sign a release for you to be able to access their medical records. It's crazy. But of course, my my response to that is sign this piece of paper or you don't get dinner. That's how that works. And I take your computer away or whatever. Uh, Crazy Warlock says, um, oh, Crazy Warlock was just 
copying and pasting. Okay, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Did I miss anything else? If I missed anything else uh, on Rumble, please do it again. Copy and paste for me and I'll make sure that I read it. And all right, so here it is. It looks like the audio got put up by Hidden True Crime on yeah. YouTube. So let's go to that and hear his second interview, which I hear gets really weird. Really weird. Oh, please don't do the spinning thing. Thanks for meeting us. Were you there the first? I was there. I don't think I interviewed with you. Okay. Lieutenant Dudley was with, with me the first time. I don't remember a lot. Yeah. Oh, you're okay. I don't blame you. A lot all at once. And Usually, a long time you'll see is a good thing when you're dealing with it. Yeah. 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 But I know that. Oh, Brad. Don't you dare. Are you still downloading those files? I uh, think so. Yeah, they are still downloading. Should I stop them? Yeah, I'd yeah. stop them. I'll just pause them. Okay. Um. <laughs> I do in the car, okay. but not, not okay. on. So I'll grab that for you, though. Okay. So like I talked to Mr. Ketcher about, I just want this to be totally ran by you. Uh, I won't ask you any questions that are incriminating. We're not looking at you as a suspect or anything like that. We just are more curious of the dynamic and Jody coming into your relationship, your lives. So if you kind of just want to walk us through that on how she came into your lives and then where things started to change. Jody, you mean? Jody. Or, Jody. Jody. I you said Julie, but. Oh, Jody. 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 Yeah, Jody. Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. I'll, I'll ask first, have you found the pen papers? The pen papers. So we found quite a bit they're, of different uh, We believe they're on the, the computer. That's referring to the journal. That the journal. I think they're trying to mail them off. We do not have a direct copy of it, no. Because my understanding was we had purchased as a Christmas present for Jody in 2021 a leather, like a leather folder, but, you know, three inches thick or whatever, and it had an engraved on the leather on the outside the pen papers, and Ruby wrote detailed notes of everything, all interactions with Jody and Pam Botcher from... Ruby was recording August them because she thought it would be scripture Hill, someday. Uh, Jesus. Is it, uh, is it like a satchel looking? Whether it's a bit or is it more like a binder? No, well, no, it's like, I, I didn't even know what it, they call it. it. But it's it's flat. It's, it's, well, yeah. It's you, so it's you like see, a short, because we do have Ruby's journal, which is from those dates that you mentioned. These, these things this, are going to be so... She wouldn't write the stuff she wrote in the pen papers. She would not write in her journal. The stuff she wrote in the pen papers was not intended to be read by anybody until God would decree them to be written as scripture. So says so Jody. Oh, Jesus. I believe that's what, what we have. Okay. Wait, wait, so wait. You're saying the pen would be different, correct? Well, I gotta like get back a, to my screen. Well, it was just in a thing. Call the pen papers. So it was, and and that's how Ruby referred to those. All right, I'm sorry. It's like a coded straight. language. Make it this straight. She believed that these rantings of hers in her journal were going to be turned into scripture. Anointed yes, by God as she's... scripture. Yes, and Jody is God, who rides the lion in heaven, as you can see on the screen there. Look, I realize I know that there are a bunch of Mormon Mormon people in the chat, and they're very offended by me saying that it is a that Mormonism is a cult. I do not mean to imply that every person who is a Mormon Mormon is participating in cult activities, but I do believe that this religion lends itself to cult activity, and we've seen it over it and over again. It predisposes you to it over and over again. Listen, folks. I, and that my sister will not like me saying this, I believe that I was raised in a cult. She will not like me saying this. I know she's in the chat, but she knows I think this. I've had this conversation with her. My mom doesn't like me saying it either. 
there is a there is a real thing. I'm telling when I wasn't joking when I said take the quiz. Am I in a cult? Cults have and fundamentalist religions have a predisposition towards cults. Like they just do. And yes, all religions can be cultish. They can be. You like, for instance, the Catholics have um, uh, different sects that can do can like be involved in really weird cult activity. Like, for instance, there's one in particular that believes in self-flagellation. If you remember the um, mm -hmm. re remember that movie with Tom Hanks and the weird priest that kept that band around his leg that was yeah. deep into his skin and he was tightening it all the time. Opus Day, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And they would and the, the monks would whip themselves. Okay. This is that's cult activity. Now I'm a Catholic. Am I a member of a cult? No. I don't take part in cult activities. I, I don't do any of that. We're not doing that. Um so it's the same sort of thing. It's but when you identify the that there's like all these strange offshoots that are doing this weird abu child abusing cult activity like the Lori Vallow like in the Lori Vallow case and the you know all of that um and like what about Warren Jeffs come on you guys there are like yeah, all these people that think they are god yeah it's really strange okay it's really strange and I'm not saying you're all cultists. I'm saying there's an awful lot of cult activity in the LDS thing, faith. So how do you just how do you go from the L, or sections of LDS are cultists to saying that the gentleman at Waco was not a cult leader? I don't know if he was he probably was a cult leader. I just said yeah, he wasn't dangerous. He was, yeah. Okay. I think he was definitely a cult leader, but I don't think he was dangerous. And I don't think he was going to, I don't think he was, I think the government picked a fight with him, but I could be, I mean, I could be wrong. The but government I mean, certainly was, picked a fight, but yeah. they certainly chose someone who could easily be cast off as someone who was participating in cult activities and therefore warranted something. And cults, by the way, are not illegal by their nature, right? Joining a commune, um, joining a commune, you know, that's a cult or whatever, as long as the cult is not participating in illegal activity, you can be in a cult. That's why it's so hard to get people out of cults. Like family members can't get their family out of these cults like Nexium or whatever until they break the law. And, in, and you have every right to be in a cult, um, Scientology and all these yep. others. Mm -hmm. Yep, and you only they only twin get flames. Twin flames. They can't. Oh, those geez. people aren't in jail yet with this with their spirit penises and whatever. And there's else. always a grift in there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true that all churches have issues, and fundamentalism in particular, fundamentalist religions tend to lean towards cultism and have these offshoots that were there are some real serious cults. And, and religion is used by cult leaders as a method of control. And no, I don't believe all organized religion is a cult. I don't. I don't go that far because I, I, I have experience that shows me otherwise. Um, yeah, right, right, right. Flux, that's a great point. Oh, thank you for saying it. This is exactly right. I think, pe I think people think all cults are bad. Not all cults are bad. Some are weird. And just because your religion is a cult doesn't make it bad. That's true. That's that's really true. And I would put the yes. Pentecostals in there, like because so I was raised Pentecostal. I do believe it was a cult. It's cultish, especially because they keep you away from the it's outside bizarre. world. <laughs> they keep you away from the outside world a lot. Like you go to church twice on Sundays and on Wednesday night, and on Saturday you have choir practice and then prayer meeting. There is no time in between to at, you know, socialize with anybody outside your religion, because then on the other days when church isn't in service, there are social events that you are expected to be at. There are lock-ins and sleepovers and, and uh, pool parties and this or basketball games, and it's all revolving around this one thing. Is it bad necessarily? No, we had a lot of fun sometimes. My 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 childhood was pretty fun. We went to church camp in the summer, but you were never separated from these people. Right. You were never separated from right. the dogma. And, and keeping yourself busy with church activities 
insulates you from what you would believe to be sinful nature that you would otherwise be doing. So mm -hmm. it's and Mormons, a, by their nature, are extraordinarily conservative and rely on the words of their bishop. I mean, above all, that's ingrained in their culture to do that. And and I also think, because um, I my experience in the church I was raised in wasn't all that negative. There were some negative things, and I do believe I experienced some spiritual abuse. For instance, a youth pastor told me that I was going to hell because I was I had jeans in my house. I had jeans in my drawer. I wore pants. You my the whole the world goes around telling people that they're going to hell for whatever differences there are with, with that person. Doesn't And I always would feel guilty and bad if I ever saw someone from my church while I was out wearing jeans. But my dad insisted that I would be allowed to wear pants if I wanted to. Good you know, for him. And yeah. And. It, it, but you it, got the effects of the guilt and the shame that was intended. Oh, yeah. I, there was a time after I left the church after I was 18, um, I cut all my hair off because you're not allowed to cut right. your hair at all. I cut all my hair off like a boy, short like a boy. The second I got to college, I had, I had a pixie cut back when there were no, like girls were not doing it that. It probably in felt the, good, though, didn't in it? In the 90s. Light? It did. It felt very freeing, uh, but I also hated the way I looked. I felt like I looked like a boy, especially from behind, even though that's stupid because I could never look like a boy. I don't have a boy's body. But um, yeah, the boobs might give it away. Yeah, the boobs would give it away. <laughs> but the but I also couldn't wear a skirt for years after that. Like I, I threw out every single skirt, skirt that I owned and I wouldn't buy one after that. Oh, I tried to throw out every skirt I had. My mom would dig it right out. So I, I did go through, I did go through a bit of, you know, trying to break away from that and feeling like I had, but I still had that guilt for a long time. And like wor the worry and the fear that like, maybe, maybe they were right. You know, what if, what well, if imagine they were that right? coming from a therapist? Right. Right. So look, I'm not saying that just because your religion is culty, that it's a it's bad or you're bad or you can't have a good life or you can't be happy. But you do have to recognize that the signs of being in a cult and it's good for you once in a while, especially if you belong to a um, uh, it was UPC, United Pentecostal Church. If, if you do belong to a, a fundamentalist religion, you should take that. Am I in a cult quiz and really ask yourself those questions? OK, because. It could be a non um, dangerous cult and a non-harmful cult, or it could be a harmful cult. And you really should find, should know the difference. Okay. All right. There. Let's move on. Well, I would move on if YouTube would behave. Damn it. You would think of a YouTube video of only audio would be pretty I easy. <laughs> so it described all of the visions and trances and everything that Jody and How Ruby big? went into. How big would you say it was? It was like three inches thick or so. And there were hundreds of pages of written documents that Ruby had. <coughs> and that was given to Jody in 2022 when she left and returned to her home in January. So this is similar. Yeah, like it would look like that. Okay. That's not the journal that we have, so. No, I think you're talking. Looks like it's actual. But it's he knows that Jody this other thing exists. Now. Yeah. But she wouldn't want to destroy it. Because we we found didn't find that one. in the home. We, found the empty one. we did find an empty one. So. I remember saying oh, it was empty. I think that's why he freaked out yeah, about Sherry going one, over to the house. The papers on the outside of it, and they emptied it. I did sign it. We'll go back through our photos and see if that's because yeah. everything in the if, home was photographed. If you're interested in Pam Botcher, mm -hmm. that's going to tie you Pam Botcher. Oh, come on. All right, let me close some windows. I have too many windows open. Uh, I did just get the new motion for the Eckerd v. Owens thing. I'm asking Tug if he, I'm going to be on with Tug tonight, and I'm asking him if he wants to go over that instead of um, I don't know what we were planning uh, to do tonight. 
So I'm going to see if he wants to go over yeah, that. I don't think there's an update in the Hales. Thing, if, if the empty back. one says the pen papers on the outside of it, then they empty it. We'll go that. back through our photos and see if that's yeah. if everything in the if, homeless photograph. If you're interested in Pam Botcher, mm -hmm. that's going to tie Pam Botcher to all of the what's in those documents. Okay. Okay, so um, can I just interrupt for a minute? I'm sorry. Sure. Um, is it spinning again, or we just no, it's redacted? It's, it's redacted. Oh, oh, okay. Is it okay to bring the puppies? Yes, we want the puppies, right? Okay. Okay, so why don't you finish here and then call me when you're done? And we'll okay. Okay, let me see if I can find it. Okay, thank you. Um, in twenty in twenty eighteen, we were psych. Oh, redacted. redacted. <laughs> That's going to be hard to find in today's world. Um, good luck. Did the closed captions go we off? We had uh, a very close friend go. named Paige Hanna, who lives in Mapleton, who was um, a massive <laughs> fan of Connections and Joey Hildebrand. And in fact, the Hannas are on the cover of their book. If you know, you've probably seen them. And so. Um, Ruby started to speak with Jody towards the end of 2018, early 2019, with the um, intention of having her be the there. Redacted. To Jody. Um, Jody always had a larger interest in um, communicating with the parents more than with the actual patient. I always found huh. curious, um, but her theory was, if if you want to help your child, you have to help yourself first, and then you'll know how to help the child. So she spoke with Ruby frequently, and the frequency of their communications um, ramped up. And then the first conversation that Jody had with Chad was in June of. 2019. Chad's her son. A, a trip to the East Coast. All of her visits with Chad virtual through Zoom. Um, but she would talk with Ruby on the phone or through Zoom quite frequently. Um, so Jody met with. More redactions. Um, Church redaction. Probably. Things got really church leaders it, yeah it got strange around mm -hmm. the uh, and hey listen the fall. i will criticize and have criticized the catholic church over and over again for covering up the child abuse and for moving priests around that was wrong yep. it was criminal and every single person who did that should be defrocked and th this i criticized my own church for doing what they did so there is no problem with anyone criticizing the LDS church for, for protecting a woman like Jody. Why are they doing that? And why should anybody feel any protectiveness over LDS officials or bishops or anything else who are doing that, who are involved in covering up child abuse and covering Absolutely. up cult, cult activity? We all expect the Catholic church to weed out the abusers and, and get rid of them. And yet, we what we we're, we're going to allow the LDS church to just keep keep hiding it under the rug, stuffing it under the rug. Why? Why? The second I say, hey, this is this is terrible. And we, you get all you, these Mormons in the chat like, hey, I can't listen to this. What, what do you mean? I'm a Catholic and I'll sit here and tell you all day long. I've written articles about how terrible their response to the abuse uh, scandals were. They're terrible and they're, there's no excuse for it. And they all need to be thrown out on their ass. Mm -hmm. And, and so any bishop, any LDS official that helped Jody get to where she was and ignored the cries of their people, the cries of help, those people need to be railroaded out. You, you Ruby need to wrote them down. Yeah, and they're all getting redacted out of this. 
Do it, uh, is it redacted out of her journal too? Nope. <gasps> They're in there. They're named. It says it says who Jody met with on two different occasions. Good. Yeah, good. Yeah, it, th this needs to come out. It needs to come out, and everybody, you know what? Put your feelings aside about your religion. Put it aside. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to be affiliated with a religion that covers up for child abuse. You do not want to be in a religion or anywhere near one that is doing this. And it, I'm we not telling you to leave your Lori religion. Vallow. We I'm just not, came off yeah. Lori Vallow. Lori Vallow. We had Warren Jeffs. I mean, come on, you guys. I'm not saying you have to leave your religion, but you do have to clean it up. You do. You have to do everything you can to clean it up. And if the bishop was involved, if like this LDS guy, I don't know even who he is, but whoever the head guy is, if he was involved, he needs to be ousted. You guys need to clean up your own house. Don't yell at me for being disgusted by the state of your house. Clean the it up. The church gave her all the power and all the money she has. Exactly. Yeah, don't get mad at people who are saying, hey, this is this is bad. This is wrong. Because I don't get mad at people it's who say... It's just an observation. Yeah, and I don't get mad at people who say that the Catholic Church was bad and wrong for doing what they did. They absolutely are. They, they absolutely should be called out. Every single one of the um, cases that are... Those people ought to be... The victims ought to be given all the restitution they deserve. Yeah. And yeah, all the Mormons left the chat. Well, you know what? Here's That's another indication that you're in the you're in a cult. If you cannot hear criticism of your religion, you might be in a cult. You have to be able to critically think mm -hmm. for yourself. Mm -hmm. Of 2020, the Hannahs were trying to convince and bring Ruby into. Um, thank you. Into this um, organization called Connections. And. Uh, that particularly were focused on things like lust versus love and, and healthy marriages, happier marriages, happier Like marriages. Jody knows what love is. Um, she invited me to go to a... This group called Connections, but I'm not seeing like anything. A conference or something held. Connections is her podcast. In Lehigh. There were like but it's spelled with an X. That was fall of 2019 um, maybe late summer of 2019 late summer late summer 2019 and my impression at that time was this is this is absolute craziness this is a bunch of man hating women that are just <laughs> looking for excuses to you know, tear down their husband bunch of man hating and women yeah yeah like yep. <laughs> yep he was right um, call them a pack of dogs but it did it was confusing because there were people that i respected a lot that were up on the stage with microphones in hand you know giving testimonials or how exploiting great this was and how it changed their lives and their marriage and like the hannahs were among them you know and, and and so yeah it was confusing um Ruby, then we went on a trip with the Hannahs to the UK in October of 2019. And I swear the whole objective of the trip was to like convince me to get into connections because all of them were in it except me. And, and but you know, they made some really eloquent arguments and then I agreed to join a men's group with Jody in January of 2020. Her problems she didn't have. And, and I would do it for three months. Um, so I started that men's group in 2020. And, you know, the group, I, I don't know if you've ever been to like a, an addiction recovery group, but that's what, what it was. That's what it felt like. I mean, there were probably 10 men in there. It was on Zoom. All of them were like, working through you know various stages of like sex addiction porn addiction um, drug addiction and, and it was just the, it was like a 12-step group but intended just for general like addiction recovery and, and i really was like what the hell am i doing here like i don't belong here <laughs> but everyone's like no come here like you can learn to have a better like life and a better marriage and so i, I thought okay whatever 
um, I went through my my three, you know, obligatory three months, and I was ready to leave. Hear that? Obligatory three months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, four in the chat if you're a Mormon and didn't leave. I like this idea. Put a four in the chat if you're a Mormon and didn't leave. Nice. You're an Tammy. all star. Nice, Tammy. Nice, D. Robertson. Nice. Nice. Way to be an adult. Way to be an adult. Way to face it. Way to face it. You know what? I've had to put up with a lot of criticism over being a Catholic and still being in, in the church. Uh, but yeah. Um, I got challenged to. Oh, and then I got. I got challenged to sit down and have a vulnerable conversation with my wife um, and ask her how my lustful choices have affected her. And, no, you know, to me, no, I'm, I, I found this website, jodyhildebrandt.com, and it talks about her child abuse arrest, her license being on probation in 2012 and whatnot. And it says that she uses this term distortion in her teachings, and it says living in lust being sexually attracted to your spouse <laughs> yeah what being sexually attracted to your spouse is lust that's the opposite of that they it's... told kevin his porn addiction is because he asked his wife for sex see that's what i'm telling you like they say everything is an addiction and it's it's not they have some really weird um, be being ideas addicted about to sex. your spouse, your work, shopping, electronic games, sleep, addicted to sleep, like <laughs> social media, driving, addicted to driving. Well, she can turn anything into an addiction. Yeah. Just so she can Every, put you yeah. in, a, in her group. Receiving and... compliments, exercise, eating, drugs or alcohol, sex, pornography, hobbies and entertainment. So you're supposed to do nothing. Right. I mean, it's just it's just an excuse to turn any behavior, any normal human behavior into an addiction so that she can control you so that she can. And get these groups are not free to attend. Oh, I'm sure they're not. I want to know what the real story is about her preying on the women whose husband she kicked out of the home, because I I'm I guarantee you that I there think was you some... already know what it is. I, I guarantee I want to know how she did it. How did she get them to. You know, act it's out right with her in sexually. Kevin's interview. Oh, it is. Oh my mm -hmm. god. Oh my god. I knew it. I knew it. But, you know, I still didn't see what I had done or anything that would cause. Oh, spinning wheel. Constitute any form of like, you know, abuse or, or anything like that, and. Um, but I did. I, I took the challenge and I sat down and for two hours, Ruby, very emotionally, just shared how she felt in our marriage and how the things that I, um, over 20 years of marriage, you know, asking for sex as a husband frequently or um, yeah, what's wrong with them? Lingerie or, or things like that. How that made her feel. Because he likes um, her in lingerie? It was really emotional. Oh, my God. He just asked I, if she I would. I realized that she felt so strongly about that, that she felt so hurt by that. Oh, what? So I committed. So he's that feeling guilt and shame. Really give it a go. And I stayed in the men's group. And so, you know, in that men's group, I met with Jody every week um, with the other men that were in the group. And, and, um, then it got weird because yeah. like, our, our marriage felt like it was getting better and stronger. So this was now, you know, summer and fall of 2020. And, and in addition to that, there was the whole YouTube cancel thing. I, I don't know how much you guys are even interested or aware of YouTube that. YouTube cancel thing. She in quit May with the YouTube eight passenger. Um, videos that Ruby released on uh, that dealt with Chad just blew up in her face and it was all over the news and hundreds of thousands of TikTokers and all this stuff were just piling on and basically burned down like our YouTube channel and overnight like the income went you know we lost 90 percent of the income overnight and um, that was hard. <coughs> um, was this like the 
what, what which episode was this? Is this the one where they talked about like, the big bag? Or? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and then they started going back and trying to dig and find, and then they find their little nugget. It's like, oh, look, they, you went to school without a lunch one day, or you know, stuff like that. Um, but it was the big bag video that really set people off. So then they went back from there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So at that time, Ruby was really distraught. She was looking for support. She was looking for someone who would understand her. Who like your would husband? Validate her, and she found that in Jody. Jody, all, all the stuff she did with Chad was because of Jody, and so she, it makes sense that she would go to Jody, you know, for emotional support when she felt like her world was burning down. Um. In the meantime, like our, I felt like our marriage was was getting stronger. It, it felt better. Like we we didn't fight as much. And, um, even though we were having less sex, it it felt more connecting, and and it was just I thought, wow, this is great. Like you know, this this is great. And I was happy to be the guy up on the stage. You know, that started sometime in like that's so sad. Twenty twenty the fall of 2020 there would be a conference and ruby would say i thought we were just attending it but then she'd say hey they, they wanted us to get up and tell our story you know and i'm like oh, okay sure so i get up and, and and just say like yeah i was the guy who said i think this is a bunch of like you know man hating you know women that it really has made a difference in my marriage and, and i it, it really did like i believed it and so those conferences and stuff, everything continued like that until March of 2021, when after a conference, at, um, a connections conference down in St. George, all the the like the inner circle, all the the people who were were being trained um, as you know mental fitness um, coaches and stuff. So that was Ruby and a bunch of other people and their spouses. We went out to like a dinner afterwards. And, and that's where Jody really opened up to the women in a private conversation that private really conversation tormented and haunted by shadow figures every night. And um, <coughs> that was spooky, you know. And I don't know exactly what happened, but the Hannahs do. Um, all I know is at some point within a couple of days of that, in, in that month of March, they, the Hannahs drove down from Mapleton and picked Jody up and brought her back their home in Mapleton and she lived for six weeks in that home in Mapleton and this is where like I don't know what happened but I do know that there's two different sides of stories they tried to introduce her to a new cult lady that the Hannahs were getting into so they wanted to merge their cults into one apparently and we refer to it as a cult. You know it's bad when oh, your cults no. need a no, no one in a cult says, I'm in a cult. <laughs> no one in a cult says, I'm in a cult? Yeah, they do. A lot of people in cults come to the realization that I might be in a cult. That's how you get out. He doesn't know that. Right. But from your perspective, it looks like two cult leaders merging together. From where I stand now, absolutely. Um. According to Jody, she was held against her will for six weeks and was kidnapped, and she escaped and got out. According to the Hannahs, after six weeks of Jody stabbing herself with forks and knives, cutting what? herself, and yeah. wanting to commit suicide and trying to seduce the husband of the family, what? they wow. kicked her out. Wait. I don't know what's the truth of her. What? Yep, you heard it right. Stabbing herself. When was this, supposedly? 
This was uh, the- during the summer of whatever year he's talking about. Wow. So and for six was- months, either Jody was kidnapped or she was stabbing herself in somebody's house. Okay. That's some. Uh, yeah, totally normal. Well, we were saying earlier that we that she definitely is sadistic, right? She was she likes oh, yeah. to abuse children. She may be sadomasochistic. She, she may like pain. Yeah. She That's may like yeah. Thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She and somehow she found in Ruby someone who also likes it. Because there's no other explanation for why Ruby would allow this to be done to her children and take part in it. The the children's testimony was that her mother, their mother, and Jody tied them up. Yep. She was involved in this, rubbing cayenne in their wounds. Maybe a little bit of both. I don't know. But the point is, uh, somewhere around mid-April, Jody was back in her home in Ivan, and she was a hot mess. And she reached out to Ruby for help. And Ruby, Ruby was always jealous of the Hannahs that they had a better relationship with Jody than she did. Ruby, and this is like goes back to her childhood. She wanted to be the best friend. She wanted to be the most liked. She wanted to be the the one that everybody knew. And and so it hurt her that she felt like she was being excluded from what was going on at the Hannah's house. And then she'd say, why are so many secrets? And the Hannah's would say, it's not secret, it's sacred. And when the time's right, you can know too. You know? Um, so we went down to Jody's house in May of 2021. That was the first time I'd ever been there. And it blew my mind, as you, I'm sure you have walked in there and gone, how does a therapist look like this? Like, uh-huh, good question. It didn't make sense to me. But we were there, and she opened up and talked about you know, her struggles and, and what was going on. And I got to say, like, I'm a smart guy. I'm an engineer. I've designed and helped build some really big stuff. I'm a college professor. I can't explain some of the stuff that happened while we were there. Like crashes in, in the basement while we were talking upstairs. And, and plates mm-hmm. like in the kitchen just flying off by themselves like oh full what the speed hell smashing on the wall and, and falling to the floor like, by themselves I, I, what by themselves don't put it past crazy to be the one making the noises i can't explain it but i saw it with my own eyes and and i don't have any way to explain it maybe the, maybe the devil was involved Maybe the demons were involved and they were, uh, you know, inhabiting Jody. Yeah, sounds like it. They weren't in the children, though. I can tell you that for sure. Yeah. Ruby was convinced that we could intervene and help Jody. I didn't want to think. Think about how crazy that is. They're going to intervene on the therapist priesthood and the church and all that stuff. Just, just go to your support network but um, Ruby continued to be like no we can help like she doesn't want that could you imagine like what would happen to her reputation <laughs> no this is out? funny so, let's help her time to call in the actually actually call in the Catholic priests <laughs> the fix for this, the fix for this is an exorcism. Yes. This is, so we can have one cult help the other and, and we can maybe fix this. I'm just kidding. And I don't believe there are exorcisms anymore. in this conversation, too. I don't believe anyone should do exorcisms other than Catholic priests, though. I don't. I think that you're a, playing with fire unless you unless you use a, a, a priest. So we We went down like a couple more times between May and August, but it reached the point where in August, 
her bishop at the time, a guy named, who's down there in Cayenta, named um, Scott Galbraith. He's not a bishop anymore, but I mean, he was going over there like every night, and he'd be there for like four hours. And, and what he was doing? He'd be like, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm fighting evil spirits. I'm casting demons out. I'm crazy stuff going on. Right? Okay, so there were exorcisms. Yeah, cool. to the point where he's like, I can't do this anymore. Like, there, there needs to be some sort of resolution. It Casting them out of said, Jody? Yeah. Or out of the, are these, are there children involved in this? No. He was no. taking care of Jody in her Just fragile Jody. Okay. state of whatever. Okay, Stephanie, no, she does not have a husband. Jody is not married. And see what? You take her up Big to surprise. Your house. Yeah. Like, oh, hell no. I, I don't want Why don't you take her to your house? Uh, no. I was beaten over the head with it. Like, that's really insensitive. You know, she's done so much to help our family. And, that's and so you're, manipulative. You're being selfish, and, and she has needs, and, and come on with that. <sighs> It won't be for long. And so I, I relented and I was like, okay. Actually, you know, this could kind of be fun. Let's just make it fun and, and we'll like. Oh, to take a, a demon <laughs> so we'll woman in your house. It's fun to take a demon possessed woman into your house. I am so confused by this timeline and the story here. So are you telling me that knowing this background of Jody, who's being, you know, I don't know, she's like the house of horrors, this one, stabbing herself with forks and stuff. That after this, this man agreed to let that woman give him psychological care? Yeah, and paid him and paid for it while she gaslit him out of his life. But how did, how do we go from she's the crazy lady I don't even want in my house to, oh, sure, she's the one we go to for couples therapy. Yeah, of course. That was the first interview before he knew anything. Now he now he oh, has a better so now understanding. He's, now he's saying what he knows. Yes. He was keeping yes. it to himself. Okay, but still, though, I need to understand why he allowed his wife to drag him to her therapy group, knowing that this is the way this woman's history was. I I don't understand. That, that, I, do, that I don't know. Other than she's in a position of extreme power and authority. But how did she get there if bishops are coming to exercise demons out of her? They put her- 95% of the her. referrals. This is so nuts. This is so crazy. This is like, I can't stop listening. Go I know. Drives up the canyon and stuff like that. And it turned into just like- Thank God crazy. I have a lot of leftovers in the refrigerator. The moment she showed up at my house, we just the I was thinking the same. started happening. Lights turning on and off. Said, sounds of people walking in walls and oh my god like sounds she is possessed this woman is possessed by actual demons she's probably in her own house making noise and then being like what the hell was that i don't know lights going on and off i mean i'm not one i'm i am a catholic i believe in demon possession i've seen some weird shit <laughs> I, just, I, I don't, it's not something I think is a, is not true in some cases. I think most cases are mental illness, but there are some cases that cannot be explained. And I don't know. That's fair. That's fair. It's like footprints going up walls and across the Footprints? And, and How do you fake that? <laughs> it sounded Stuff like floating footprints. Floating around and, and like, Oh, and I it see. Just, it was weird. And I hated yeah. it. Kevin, I think so. And I became the resident exorcist. There we go. The title I oh my God. I feel like I should be doing this as a late stream. This is not yep. nearly creepy enough. We need to, <laughs> I need, we need to creep out with this late at night, some night. Wow. <laughs> I, I, this is like a, this is turning into a George Norrie or Art Bell show. Oh yeah. And the, the twists just keep coming, man. I'm telling you. This is so weird. Right? Came up with myself. I thought it was kind of funny. But it was my job to like go and give her <laughs> lessons whenever she started to like go into a trance and, and go into possession. And, which started to be That a signs of some serious mental illness and Ruby too. would go up and check on her. It started like 
four every four hours at night, and then it moved every two hours at night, and then it moved every hour at night, and then at some point Ruby said, "You know what? I'm just going to start sleeping in there." Uh huh. And, and if I need you, I'll come down and get you. She started That's sleeping with Jody. Weird, but okay. Yep. And, and that Tom was Riddle. That. She, they started sleeping. Must be an alert. <laughs> yeah. Then she started having like trances and stuff. I would say probably September, where she believed that she was going to heaven and, and seeing God and Jesus and, and talking with him. And she would get together with Pam Botcher. And instead of getting his wife some mental help, he believed this was true. I'm yes. I just can't. Ruby she gaslit him out of his own bed. Together and do these interventions. That's what they call them. And so they just go up and lock themselves in a room for four or five hours. Listen to this, Megan. They come out and, and they'd all just be on cloud nine. And, and, and Ruby would share with me like she had this amazing vision. And I wrote it and recorded it all down. And we have a work to do. Every time I have an orgasm, I'm like, call it a vision. And you're part of it. Mental clarity. And the vicious part of it. And we're all part of bringing all this stuff. You missed it, Megan. You're muted. Hold on. So it was. Sorry, I had. Hangry came up. He's, he had a question. I need to back up. What did I miss? <laughs> I said, every time I have an orgasm, I'm going to call it mental clarity and a vision. <laughs> But poor it's Kevin doesn't, doesn't. He can't put it together, man. Uh, oh, this is crazy. All right. I want to hear this part. I think oh, I missed it. And so they just go up and lock themselves in a room for four or five hours. And then they'd come out and, and they'd all just be on cloud nine. And, and, and Ruby would share with me like she had this amazing vision. And I wrote it and recorded it all down. And... and we have a work to do from God and, and, and you're part of it and, and the bishop's part of it. And we're all part of bringing all this. She stuff says she recorded it. I, she said recorded, wrote it all down though. Does she mean recorded in a journal or they recorded on video? I don't yeah, know. That's I don't what I want to know. Leather bound thing that he was talking about. Yeah. So it was, um, and it continued like that until I wanted to move on with life. And I would call it dragging my heels. So that was around October. And Jody flipped out because during one intervention, Chad was in the backyard with a bunch of friends. And it was my job to keep all the kids contained in the basement watching movies or playing video games. And, I you know, the they're having sex upstairs. I thought they were done, but they weren't done. And Chad. Had... How many women were in this room? Was it just her and Jody, or there were other Three. people? Has Jody, pa Pam, has Botcher, Pam, and Ruby. Has, has Pam been uh, brought in for questioning? Where's her interview? Um, it's in there somewhere. Because the other two kids were at her house cleaning it. This does sound like mushrooms, LSD, something. Yes. They're taking Flux drugs. Is... <laughs> Flux is like, yep, they banged. <laughs> they banged and they're banging on mushrooms. This is what this sounds like. But this poor, is... poor Kevin's like, I don't know what went on in there, but they were on cloud nine, orgasmic. Oh my God, what is wrong <laughs> with him? Like, I can't even imagine my husband putting up with any of this for like five seconds. Like, the second I was like, I know. Let's bring this demon possessed woman into our home. He'd be like, "Bitch, you crazy? What? No, <laughs> right? What? What? What?" And now she's in his bed, and he's on the couch yeah. and in charge of keeping the kids in away. In charge of keeping the kids out of their way. Yeah. This is so crazy. <laughs> it was cloud sixty nine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me get for to some of the super chats. They're, they're backing up. Uh, David Washburn, thanks for the super chat, says, for Megan's fiber connection, it doesn't exist out here. We don't, 
it, we don't even have it. We couldn't get it if we wanted to. Boomer HIO, thanks for the super chat, says people may say mind your own business, but I believe it's time for all of us God-fearing people to speak up and stop evil when it occurs. Unfortunately, when we do speak up, our uh, institutions like CPS don't believe us and, and, and they don't do anything. Rogue Mama, thanks for the super chat, says, Megan, will we be doing a fax and letter campaign? We might have to when the parole, when they're up for parole. Debbie sure. Florio, I need to set a, like a reminder for four years from now. Yeah. <laughs> check, check, <laughs> check parole board. Who's up for parole? Debbie Florio, thanks for the super chat, says, under their system, the parole board decides the sentence based on review and testimony by interested readers parties jesse and parties jesse says she'll testify we need to find out who's on that parole board and do a dig into who they are and what connections they have becca lynn jesse is such an important part she is she's an important witness part of frankie's mm -hmm. plea is that the prosecutor agrees to stay neutral and not oppose frankie's opportunity for probation when it comes up oh my god yep. who would who would sign such a thing that's crazy why would the state sign that? Teddy O'Hearn, thanks for the super chat, says cult equals a relatively small group of people having beliefs or practices, especially relating to religion that are regarded by others as strange or sinister, or as imposing excessive control over members. Control and power. Control. It's all about control. Rogue Mama, thanks for the super chat. High demand religion. Use that. I like that term. Yes. I like that a lot. A high demand religion. Always be aware of a high demand religion. Be aware. I'm not saying they're all cults, but it can be one if you're not careful. Cool Gamer, thanks for becoming a member. Welcome to the Fox Den. It's super weird in here. All right, let's see. Motion is on. Yep, I know. I got it already in my inbox. Thank you, Brad. Um, I'm hoping to read the Laura it's Eckerd. 30 v pages. I mean, Laura Owens v. Clayton Eckerd motion on with Tug tonight, hopefully. And then maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Uh, again on my channel, but I'll be on with Tug tonight at 7 p.m. So we have to hurry up because I need to, you know, go do other things in between now and then. It's a She's getting hungry, I can tell. <laughs> out. She was ready to come back to Ivan's on her own that night, and Ruby and Pam talked her into staying. But that was the first night where Ruby said, I want a separation from you. All right, this is fair. And this is fair. Becca Lynn, you mean like how Megan makes us sit through three intros and won't continue the stream until we all peer pressure each other to hit the like button? Yeah. How do you think you got where she is? Guilt and you shame. Might, you <laughs> might be in a cult. You might be in a cult, chat. <laughs> I, I advise you, I advise you to please uh, take the quiz. <laughs> if that's all you're pressured into, I think you got out pretty well. You got out yeah. pretty easy. Oh my God, that's funny. You can leave whenever you want. <laughs> you can. I will not try to stop you. I will not stalk you. I will, nothing. You can leave whenever you want. You don't even have to buy a workbook. Separation. So it was. Um, it was hard. Basically, there were all these rules now placed on me. Like, I could leave when I wanted, but I couldn't come back until. Ruby gave me permission. I couldn't come into the kitchen to eat until Ruby gave me permission. And the upstairs where Jody roamed was completely off limits. I couldn't go upstairs anymore in my own house. Um, An in-house separation. And he, what? He wasn't allowed to go upstairs in his own house, and this man agreed to Not this. Not without her permission. Nope. High maintenance subscription, Robert James. <laughs> <laughs> oh man the chat is off on a rant the chat is the chat has left uh they, they've left the topic and they're they're full on into the fox den cult and i bet is locals memeing it yet locals are you memeing my cult yet <laughs> <laughs> i'm not sure if they're memeing the cult but i'm sure they'll get to it if they haven't done it already oh my god all right here we go ruby would dictate all of the terms of how our interactions would be when we would talk when um, and that was hard. And it was during that time that I really became, I would say, dependent upon Ruby. Like if she said a kind word to me, like That's so sad. my whole day was made, right? And uh, so that separation continued all the way up until the holidays, maybe, maybe the 
the last week of December, first week of January, and then would be the end of that that separation. Jody went home it was like the second week of January. But by that time, like Ruby, Pam, and Jody were completely determined to do the Okay, this is true. Capital call out. You like to abuse us by making your intros longer if morale doesn't improve. <laughs> yeah, she didn't like your attitude. We're if I don't like starting your, all yeah, over. We're starting all over from the beginning. <laughs> from the beginning. I will I will not hesitate. I will push that button. Nigga, you smart, <laughs> dropping bombs on your news. Might try fiddle along, not a press news, mainstream spinning. But I won't play that game. A nuclear flow turning at you for motivational flame. Megan Fox crushing all the talking heads as they spoon feed their paid piggies. Gotta keep them misled. With blazing Lego vision, I see it all the signs. Exposed in the agenda, miss these epic rhymes. Intellectual assault on the mainstream, not in the current. And burn water, but I'm spitting facts. Top shelf, sorting max facts, reporting news, and not like you make it. I'm award winning, and I don't have to fake it. Megan Fox, an authentic voice, giving the masses a hard hitting choice. That umbrella guy, hammering his song, while Megan Fox writes those wrongs. Now we hit the end of this tune. Then you never knew By the time I press Singulize a proof Break your stories while you're chasing hunches I'm a new type Never pulling punches All right Genius. Is that like the fourth <laughs> intro I've played today? I've never heard so. that That was good <laughs> You still haven't You hadn't heard that yet? No Tug wrote that song for me Dang I, I, uh, Isn't it good? That's great I know. It's, it's a it's a jam. All right, we're going to keep going. This work that they felt God had for them. And um, I thought it was crazy. Like, I thought it was just that shit crazy. Like, Ruby, you have a reputation. You have a multi-million dollar business. You have a brand. And you were just giving it away. She wanted to legally, like, work with Jody's attorney to basically give Jody eight passengers and, uh, for nothing and become an employee wow. of connections. So basically the contract was Ruby gives Jody everything and Ruby gets nothing in return. Our manager, um, our Rift YouTube much. manager at the time was like, um, red flags, red flags. Like, I don't know how to tell you she is scamming you. Ruby fired him. And I was like, I believe our manager. I think he's right. And Ruby started threatening me with another separation. And just like, this isn't about money. This is about doing God's work. So we continued in that dynamic for the next six or seven months until she went on a trip with Jody and Pam down to Arizona. And I think they like, when I read her journal, it, she went into Mexico or something and bought drugs or something like what? prescription drugs for the emergency bought drugs. Kits. Oh, for the emergency when she kits. She came back from sure. that trip, before she even brought the bags into the house, she pulled me in and said, um, I want to talk with you. And that's when she asked me to leave. And that was Why are they going to Mexico? To get drugs. Why does anybody That's go to Mexico? My interactions with Jody at that point became one of Jody. I was still in the men's groups, but the dynamic changed. 
instead of being like one of the top people that helped run groups and, and helped support, all of a sudden I was, I felt like I got knocked to the bottom. And Jody was just piling on me every week. And, and he's just group. accepting and other it. Men, uh, the other paying men for just it. do whatever Jody does. And paying for and Jody it. Jody piles on somebody, they all pile Please, on. Please, ma'am, can I have somebody, another? They all praise. And so it, it, it really felt like a, that's it so felt sadistic. Like a, like a pack of dogs, and Jody was the alpha. And Ooh. whoever she, you know, the sick butch, the dogs huh? on, they would go. Whoever she praised, the dogs would just lick them up and down. And, and that's Ooh. how these groups went. And so once I was in separation, every week was just hell, psychological hell. And Jody was running it. Everything was on Zoom. And I knew that the only way I would ever get back into my house was I had to get Jody's approval. If I didn't get Jody's approval, I would never get Ruby's approval. That is so fucked up. Why would he even but want approval like from these hags? No matter what I did, no matter how like much I tried to... Divorce is like a second to murder. You know, truthful and, and not be selfish uh, every week it was like you're being manipulative you're being selfish you're lying you're you're hiding something you're still hiding stuff and, and i really started oh my like, god this is a good family. point if jody well, really is demon possessed like if she's got a legion of demons inside of her that those people in that jail are not safe that the whole jail's going to be possessed pretty soon they have quick access to a priest though well, that's true. And they are in purgatory, <laughs> technically. It's true. They have access to a chaplain, at least. <laughs> Bet she gets crackers. And so that continued for an entire year. But it became more and more and more and more and more isolated. Crazy so, warlock on Rumble says... Uh, or you could kick both these dumb cunts out of your house. <laughs> yes. Yes, you could. Um, you know, Jody, Jody had an approved list of men that I could make phone calls to, and it was basically three men. That's insane. Two of those, well, no, all three of those three men An were approved like, we list. don't want to do phone calls with you anymore because you're being manipulative. And I'm like, well, who told you that? Well, Jody did. So I was completely cut off and I, you know, if I went to my <laughs> church leaders, I was seeking enablement. If I went to my family, I was seeking enablement. If I went to anybody, I was seeking enablement. And so it just, it felt like a no win. I felt trapped and that's where I was all the way up until the last week of July. When Jody called me one day out of the blue and just said, I don't understand why you're not getting it. You're not changing. I don't get it. So I've been asking God what to do. And God told me that you God need to me. have complete. Good question, Lois Thomas. Complete. Um, what's the word they would use? Um, solitude with God. Come on, monk. I really don't. Yeah, understand what are you complaining about, Kevin? You've got God. I don't understand these men. She she managed to do this to a bunch of men, and so they're all like psychologically damaged and actually believing this shit and like leaving their wives alone with this crazy woman. I don't know any men like this. I don't know any. I don't know one. Not one man in my family. Oh my God, my dad, Stephanie, Stephanie. Can you imagine what dad would do? <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if, if mom was like there were well my mom was involved in a religion he hated and like she would there were people that like he couldn't stand that she would bring over and and it wouldn't last he'd be like no <laughs> don't bring her here but i'm pretty sure if he was locking the door with if she was locking the door with one of her friends for four hours and oh my god no. kicking him out of the bed i don't think that would stand either 
No, no. Well, well, my mother did sleep in a separate room, and that was because my dad snored really bad. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. Like, locking him out, it, no, yeah. that would never, that would never work. Um, but like seriously, like I don't know any men like this. I just don't know any men, and I guess I feel very blessed and lucky right now that I don't know any men who would put up with this, who would be like, okay, honey, I'll okay, you want, I'll watch the kids for five hours while you. You have trances he's been with so your gas lesbians. Gas lit. He's confused. He's totally confused. Oh God, I'm, I'm, I, I don't understand it. I don't understand why you would put up with it. Now, Ghostery has an interesting point. Uh, these men are easy to find. They're married to borderline personality disorder women. Uh, maybe, good point. maybe like that. He okay. has been diagnosed with that. Oh, I like this. Demons with a side of drugs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, Demons just a good old a morning trip to Mexico. <laughs> oh, that, there's Brad's announcer voice. I love that. I love that. I love that. Demonic pizza with toppings from <laughs> hell. Oh, my God. They had a witch's coven going and they were summoning demons. That is what it sounds like. I mean. Ouija boards and orgies or something. More than two women is a coven. More than two witches is a coven. So, yeah, a full-on witches circle there. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what, what do you mean? And she's like, um, I don't want you to come to men's group anymore. And I don't want you to do phone calls with any of the men. And I'm like, well, then who am I going to talk with? Who's going to support me? Obviously not you. God. <laughs> go to God. God will. And so I'm just like, there's nobody. You're just, I mean. I'm, you're, you know, this kind of reminds me off. of like, you know, the religion thing drove a wedge between my parents for a long time. And, you know, they, it's, they're lucky their their marriage survived it, frankly, because my dad hated it. And the people in that church and i'm sure they meant well but they would tell my mom things like the lord will be your husband yeah. and i and i felt like that is a really that's a really terrible thing to tell someone by the way that that's like that's sort of like this like driving like you don't need your wife you just need god you know that's not okay that's how about you not speak for god that would help jody yeah like I, and I do believe that like some of these religious groups, they 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 should be more in touch with keeping marriages together. But some of these, what did the, what did you call them? High control religions. High they maintenance like, religions. High maintenance religions like to separate you from the unbeliever because the unbeliever doesn't support their narrative. You know. And he's so isolated, he's asking Jody, what do I do? I have no one. He's yeah, asking and, and the perpetrator. Them, the Lord will be your wife. The Lord will step in for your spouse. Um, that's a really bad message. I don't like it, and it triggers me because yeah. I remember being a child and being completely terrified that my parents were going to get divorced at any moment and having these people telling my mom that the that God will be her husband, and I'm like, no, 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 my dad is her husband, you know. Yeah, that's not right to say in front of him. No. Yeah, no, no. it's it's uh it's terrible, and they would do that to. Uh, there were several women in the church whose husbands, um, some of most, I think my mom was the only one whose husband wasn't in the church with her that didn't leave her, that didn't divorce her. There were other women whose husbands divorced them because they wouldn't leave this this particular religion. I mean, in my opinion, if you're married and your spouse hates your religion so much that he's willing to divorce you over it, you go find another church. You find a church that you yeah. can both you can both agree on. You don't choose the church. I just think, you know, props to my dad for sticking in there. And now, yeah. you know, my, my parents have been married forever and, you know, they're they're fine now. But that was a tough time. Very tough. Can imagine. She's Megan, like, this oh thing is fiery. What? What? This I know guy. it is. I know oh. it is. I know. I know. But I don't have time to do it now. Do not bring it up. Stop it. Do not bring She's it up. She's got to stick. Focus. We, we, we have to get through this. And then I got to kill this stream. And I'm going to go over it with Tug at 7 p.m. I no, know it is. You don't have to kill. And you kill kills a bad word. And that's <laughs> 
<laughs> all right, I'm going to see myself out because I'm going to continue reading this because this is yeah. You're terrible. all caught up in the Tonsil Twins drama. I know. Yeah. All right, all right. See, thanks for thanks for saving the day as usual. No Always, Brad. Bat Brad. Na 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 na. Bat Brad. If she needs you, she'll just yell into the abyss. That was my last. That was my last interaction and contact with Joey. But it was strange because at that time, around that time, things with Ruby started like picking up. And I didn't understand why, but like Ruby wanted to meet in a parking lot. What? And wanted yeah. to sign over titles of documents. Like to Jody. The, the two of our cars wanted me to sign them over to her name. And oh, this is so creepy. Time. And it's gritty yeah. on top of the creepy. Grifty and creepy. Um, Red Storm on locals. I mean, this is so funny. Red Storm just said, mm -hmm. my husband wouldn't put up with following a cult. I can't even have him follow directions on how to put the seat down. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> but he's the resident <laughs> exorcist. <laughs> uh, Squid Pro Quo, by the way. Uh, go ahead, Squid. Drop your link in the chat. Squid Pro Quo is raising money to start a stream, start streaming, and she now has enough money to afford a desk, but not the chair. So she just needs a few more bucks for a chair, guys. Jump around, uh, Squid. Just drop it in the chat. Dro drop that link in the chat. So if you guys want to send her a couple bucks, Squid's going to be doing some mommy ranting sometime on YouTube soon if she can get her uh, equipment. And we're helping her get that. All I right. was like, okay, you know, I'm just not, uh, I'm, I'm in total compliance mode at this point. It's just like, I'm a good husband. You see, you can trust me. And, and so whatever she asked, like sign over the, the, the cars to me, no questions, just okay. And then another thing she was like, I might want to do an investment, but I will need your signature. Do you trust me enough? that I could get your signature if I wanted to pursue my own investment. Uh, yeah. She wanted the title of the house. Whatever you say. Um, How big of an investment? What's she talking about? Did she tell you? She never did. And I never signed anything. She never brought anything to me. But when I returned to the house, everything was packed up. And a neighbor came over and said she asked for the HOA rules and, and mentioned to him that she wanted to rent the house out, which I was like, are you kidding me? And he, apparently she wanted to sell the house, but couldn't because my name was on the mortgage. And I think, I think that's what she was talking about of, will you sign something if I just put it in front of you? And you know what? I probably would have. Oh my God. Like that's how messed it's up. Heartbreaking, I isn't it? I'm glad you didn't. Me too. <laughs> that would have been disastrous. Yeah. All right. Ka Ka Kanarin on Rumble says, to me, it seems like he's trying to hang on and keep his family together. I could be wrong, but that is how I'm perceiving this. Yeah, I mean, Correct. I, I'm sure, but a stronger man, though, would have said, no, you. You don't, you lose me if you don't stop this. Like, I'm not worried about losing you. You're going to lose me if you don't stop this and all my financial support too. And I'm going to take the kids from you, you crazy bitch. But you he's know? been, he's been nothing but shamed and guilted over time, over time, over time, over time, over time. So he Mom, is really weak. Lois sent me a cash app that says uh, Kevin was abused and neglected to help his children. Well, wait, I don't think I understand that. He was abused and neglected. Yes. Oh, he was told he had to suffer this abuse and neglect in order to help his children. But yep. I mean, at some point you have to say no. You know? <sighs> But she's also a trained professional in being in able to, you know, get you to believe whatever the fuck she wants you to believe. It, oh, this is so strange. It's sick. It's she sick. really is the alpha, though. She she is. Yeah. She is the alpha. No she doubt. Was able to. Jody was able to 
assume that role and like they all cowed in front of her. It's weird. It is weird. But I can't describe to you what torture and hell it was yeah. to live an entire, it was more than a month really, in complete isolation. Believing that I was like evil and I mean, manipulative and lying and selfish and I that I had abandoned my family and that I was more interested in my selfishness than my family. And I think moving forward, you going through that is going to be extremely helpful. This is a good point, PH Joy. There's a big stigma regarding male victims of domestic abuse. And this is absolutely domestic abuse. Yep. yep. It is. It is. It's it's psychological abuse. No one was beating yep. him physically, but they were definitely putting him through psychological abuse. And so perhaps the reason why we find it so hard to believe that, like why I'm seeing, I don't know any men that this happened to. I don't I know any men who would put up with this is because I don't know any men who have been psychologically abused in this way. You know, like he's I, been gaslit out of his entire reality. Right. Right. Plus, she has all that psychological background. Right. Imagine. Training. And, and, and the truth is, so my daughter said this to me the other day. She said something about she doesn't trust psychologists or psychiatrists and thinks that they are just from what she's learned through psychology in school. She thinks that people who are trained on how to manipulate another person's brain are scary. And I kind of, I agree with her. That's probably why you have to, you know, you're supposed to be ethical because you Absolutely. do have a lot of power over another person after learning all these, you know, I don't want to say manipulation, but it is in, in some but way. It is. You I mean, she pretended like she was crazy or she was crazy. Is crazy. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you have a background in, in um, behavioral Yeah, you care. can't live with your clients. You can't impose contracts on people therapy is a consensual process you also can't impose religion as a therapist you can't advocate right. for a religion or a religious practice or demand she was demanding that this and religious kevin was not her client <laughs> yeah it's very strange well he was paying her though yep right oh, yep for the workbooks to improve himself. A lot of those are the same words that were used with them, and you're going to understand how they felt, you know. We've already talked about yeah. that, actually. In the, the, the couple of times we've met, I've said, this is how I felt. Did you feel that way? Like, yes, this is how I felt. Like, when we each confess to things that we didn't do, I'm like, I confess to things I never did. But I was so scared. And he's like, that's what I did too. So we connected on that level, you know. And, and it's crazy that anybody can get to what that level. What a sad level thing to bond over. But we were there. We were there. Oh. This is the end of July, we understand. End of July of 2022. Or the last time you saw the Jody was 23. 23. Okay. The last communication I had with Jody was. Uh, last week of July. All right, chat. Okay, Mama Ames says he's not a victim. Russell and Eve are the victims here. There can be more than than the victims than the children. I mean, she's victimized so many other families. You've heard we've heard their stories on Mormon Stories podcasts. Absolutely. She had. You can victimize. I mean, adults can be victims of abuse, and I'm not saying that we should feel so as sorry for him as we do for the children, because I don't. I think adults have more responsibility to defend themselves from some of this. But then again, also, it is still abuse. Um, I don't know if he broke any laws here. If if I don't, I don't. Obviously, the, the police, police didn't say think no. So. Didn't. They didn't charge him with anything. Mm -mm. I. Well, okay, all right, Stephanie. That's that's a good point. I blame this guy for not protecting his children. At some point, I mean, he should have known this was not a safe environment for them, and there was some kind of mental illness going on. And you know, could he have saved them from this? Probably not, though. I mean, what was he going to do? Go to divorce. First of all, Mormons don't divorce. 
And if he did try to divorce her, she would have had the entire, you know, church behind her and she would have gotten custody of those kids. What and he judge doesn't know the Utah, truth about anything. He doesn't know anything about anything. And what judge in Utah who isn't a member of LDS, and I think most of them are, is yes. going to give the children to the dad who left the religion and his wife. Nobody, no judge in Utah right. is giving is doing that. I know that Mormons do divorce, but it's it's it's, it's a frowned remote. upon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might have been like the first couple of days of August that you said. Just shortly before we made contact with you, yeah, or you month. made contact with us. A month before. Yeah. So for that whole month, my life was literally wake up exercise, go to work, pretend everything's okay, come home, do connections like workbooks and read scriptures and try to strip selfishness out of my life. Like, go to bed, wake up, repeat every day, boom, 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 boom. I mean, I was so upside down. And my plan was in six months, I get to reach back out to Jody again and 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 she'll let me back in the group and then I can prove oh I don't know if I heard a door knock but it's still not stopping. Is he at home? Is he oh. in his house? And we can Has why it been an hour? I told why would the kids be involved? Why would they be there for this interview? Was he in at his house or something? This is strange. What kids? I don't what know because he didn't have kids, custody of any of them. His kids are with DCF. Maybe yeah. his ad adult children. I told you wouldn't take an hour. I'm <laughs> sorry. We're yeah. good too. If you need to head out, that was seriously. I guess we just only, wanted. Yeah. The only question I would have, just going back, you said that she was having like these visions of like what's what, what, did we ever privy enough to understand or be told what those visions were? A couple of them. What, what were the two they should tell you about? So like one of them, she would was walking along the beach with Jesus. And oh boy. Jesus challenged her to go sit, walk on the water. And it was a whole lesson on walking on the water. Another, she would walk with Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother and she learned about, she had a pet lion in heaven. <laughs> oh, Charles. my God. I, I, I don't know why. I named Charles? <laughs> yeah. But it was like this massive lion. And she got to ride the lion. And, and Is that a euphemism ride for something? Ride the lion, my Is friend. Ride the lion. <laughs> extra large and extra hard. I don't know if that's a euphemism for something. You know, all I it sure seems like it. Pet lion and all. There was another one where... <laughs> There was a lot of satanic ones where um, I could see Satan. when she would go into possession mode, she would talk in like different voices. It was really creepy, but the voices yeah. would say, she's ours. We're not letting go. What? She is Satan's what? bride. Satan's bride? She's mine. Oh my God. I'm going to marry her. You know, so... If she was faking oh it, God. she believed that she was trying to, or, or Satan wanted her as her bride. <laughs> no, he's talking about his wife right now, not Jody, right? No, I think he's talking about Jody. Are you sure? I thought he was talking about Yeah, because Jody wants to ride the, he's talking about her visions. Oh, Jody's, I thought he was talking about Ruby's visions. Nope. Huh. She just records the visions. Oh. Oh. Teamwork. Okay. All right. Satan's bride. Well, I kind of yeah. believe that. I kind of believe that, actually. I think that's I think, accurate. <laughs> I think she might be Satan's bride. I think, I think Jody, so, too. I think we need a, a, a full-on Catholic, a Vatican investigation into Jody. I think we need, we need the exorcist to come and take a look at her. Uh, and see do if some her tests. head spins all see the way if her around. Head spins around when she gets hit with holy water. 
May the power of Christ compel you. I rebuke thee. Sarah. Do you have any questions for us? No, I'm just really interested in the pen papers. Like, for my own curiosity, I want to know what was going on in all of those little interventions. I'll look back to the photos because, like I said, we documented everything in the home, whether we took it or if we didn't. David and Nelson. She's Satan bride, only if Satan is a woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I believe she probably is. Thank you, Mr. Kester. I'm going to let you know. But, observations when you're done. Yeah, go for it. So I, I always thought it was interesting now that you mentioned that she was riding a lion. Kevin told me that when they were having these group meetings, she would never show up. She would show up on the WebEx, but in place of her person would just be this X for the connection. So it's like this Wizard of Oz thing going on. Mm -hmm. that, that she never kind of, showed her face. Kind of she never, she, she yeah. always covered herself. Yeah. Like even in the hottest of summer, she would wear these hoodies. She would smell so bad. Yeah. She would never bathe. <laughs> oh. She was trying to hide her arms and stuff because apparently Ruby told me they were just like mutilated. What? Tore up. Cut up. So the other thing that I think it's important for them to know is during that whole time when you were out, <coughs> you had communication with Ruby maybe three or four times. But yeah. at each time, or at least on some of the occasions you spoke to her, She's telling you that everything's blissful, we're doing well, you know, everything's so much better without you. Oh, that would be communicated to me by Jody every week and the men's groups too. And it was just like, you're abandoning your family. You're, and, and it always hurt so bad because it's like, I want to be with my family so bad. What do you mean I'm abandoning them? If you wanted to be with your family, you would change. You would stop being selfish. You would, but you keep being selfish, so you want it. And it was just felt like, well, how do I stop wanting it then? It's like then you must change. Well, how do I change? Well, you gotta want it. Well, how, what? You know. So how do I want it? You gotta change. It's just like perpetual cycle. Yeah, and there's no. I tried to find my way into that cycle. And, and it felt like, have you ever had a dream where there's like a problem you're trying to solve, but you can't solve it and how frustrating you feel? That's what my life felt like. And as I'm looking back and I'm realizing there was no solution. It was, there was, you either had Jody's approval or you didn't. There, I wasn't doing anything different than the other men in the group. But they got either got love bombed or you got nothing. And they were repenting and they were doing everything right. I, on the other hand, was manipulative and selfish and enabling and all blah 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 blah. And it does sound like brainwashing. She it does. became like the arbiter of, of truth, the arbiter of forgiveness. Whoa. That's a cult God's leader. Own mouthpiece yeah. One truth. <laughs> Stephanie One says. The year. It is absolutely bizarre that all these people were willing to take directions from this crazy woman who smelled bad and never showered. What on earth? And also she had these women wanting to sleep with her, apparently. And she never showered and smelled bad? Maybe that's where the drugs come in. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I think clearly, you know, and kind of came out of it. Yeah. So, yeah. One last mm -hmm. discussion. So, in the home, when the warrant was issued, there was a bag with $85,000 cash in yeah. it. And I understand her lawyer, Ruby's lawyer, has all that. I'm not. Which home are we talking about? Ivan. In Ivan. In Ivan's home. We we don't know. We the money was left where it was left. We didn't take yeah. it. We didn't it. The house was secure when we left. We're assuming that. Uh, Lamar one word yeah he has retrieve it but we don't I can't tell you yeah one or the other so here's kind of the issue that money 
she cleaned out their bank accounts. Her kids, children's their, yes, bank and accounts. Yours too, your joint account. Yeah. Oh, lovely. And that's where that money came from. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you can have or if I need to have a discussion with the county attorney. Kevin would kind of like his kids' money back. Who took the money? So it Jody? Would be so I would uh, Ruby. Oh, Ruby. I wonder what she did with it. Gave it to Jody. He wants to give them up. And I wouldn't either if I were yeah. here. Yeah. But I think he's using it for attorney fees. Yeah. I don't know if the county attorney is going to be able to separate that out. Well, some judges already separated it out. Even the county attorney's going to look at it and go, it's a it's civil. It's you both your guys' money in some sense. And, but if you to, did, the judge would have to divide that up to where it goes and do, do that. He's a county attorney. Well, if you did go civil, though, I feel like that would be your fastest yeah. route to. It's just dirty. So she did. Yeah. So, she stole yeah. money. She stole money from my 18 year old son out there. Um, she stole money from him? From, well, yep, the other thing apparently. that you did, the, I don't know, I mean, there's a lot there, but. I think they need to know that while Jody was living in your home, she was also purportedly giving therapy to Chad, and Chad was paying Everywhere. her. And he's like, what, at that time, 15, we were 16? paying her. Oh, okay. It wasn't until Chad moved out that part of his therapy was he needed to he needed to pay for his own therapy. So at he paid for his own therapy. Paying her nine hundred dollars. He paid. For, he paid his abuser nine hundred. Nine hundred dollars a month. He did. What was he doing for work? It's more than a car he payment. At, um, at a, he's a lifeguard, basically. Okay. Lifeguard supervisor at two That's different rec centers. So it was like the majority. They made him pay his abuser. Yep. He was paying her more than he's paying rent, wasn't he? Oh my God! Three times as much. Three times as much as he paid for rent. How did you uh, let your kid do that? Well, she has. She's I don't think he knew that at the time. There's a lot of money. Oh my God! There's a lot of money. I don't know if we can. Sorry, I've been a little sick. I'm not sure if we know where that money came from or where it went. Like it doesn't seem like she. Oh my gosh! Look in the past a little bit. So. Did her book sales? Were her book sales? I can't imagine. I can't imagine they were. Anyway, I need to get my kids. Yeah, we'll definitely you're let good. you go. Thank, and you. thank you so much for your time. I, I appreciate it. I want to uh, <coughs> cooperate, though, in anything related to Jody and Ruby mm -hmm. and Maybe if I can help. Uh, we appreciate we'll, that. We'll reach out to your attorney, Dr. Perry, if you have any other questions. Oh my God. Okay. That All was right. intense. Well, that was insane. I still don't know if I've changed my opinion about him though. I mean, I do think that I wish he had been able to protect those kids, but I'm not sure after what was done to his brain, if he understood the amount of danger they were in. Yeah. I think his perception was misled. I didn't see it. And yeah, I didn't see any evidence that he knew she was abusing children. No. So he didn't believe his children were in danger. And if you don't nope. know what's going on, how are you? And I understand you're all like, how can a reasonable person look at the situation and think it's not dangerous? But he was a victim of a lot of abuse here. A lot of abuse, a lot of brainwashing. And she had a lot of, a lot of power abuse. and control. <sighs> yeah. I, this is insane. I need to think. I about can't imagine how many families she's done this to. I can't either. And they're more and more coming out all the time. Pay attention to Mormon Stories podcast because they're the ones that all the people are going to to tell the story. And those, if you want to go and down this rabbit hole, that's the channel to do it on. All right. I got to get out of here. Sarah, thank you so much for being here. I hope you can come Most back when, when I do the, um, the journal. You bet. And I don't know if it's going to be tomorrow or the day after. But let me get back to you on that. Okay. Sure, sure. Got it. All right. And I will send you, I will send you, if you don't have the link, I'll send it to you for the journal writings. Oh, okay. Yeah. I appreciate that. All right. Um, I got to get a couple super chats and then we will get out of here. Let's see. David says, Stepford Husbands. Yes. Uh, that is a good observation. 
a Tracy yeah. Gating thanks for the super chat says sale on Kool-Aid. <laughs> um, <laughs> Plunds with inflation, it's now called it's now called 96. Oh, see, do you mean 69? <laughs> we now call it on the uptake. <laughs> that is Joe Biden's economy for you right there. That's what she said. All right. Do you, f I, I pulled, I starred this because I wanted to address this. Do you find it weird that he doesn't ask how his kids are doing? We actually don't know whether or not he did. My, my feeling is if he did, they would have redacted all of that because they would be giving private medical information out. So it's yeah. not really fair to say, oh, why isn't he asking about his kids? Because I would imagine that that would be redacted from the public anyway. So I don't, I don't, I don't know if we know. Right. So, right. Okay. All right. We're through all the super chats and I hope I didn't, I don't think I missed any rumble rants and locals. It, I didn't miss any tips over there if i don't think i had well, hold on i guess i need to check venmo real quick hold on uh, normally i would get a i get a announcement or a notification so i think we're good on that front i did check cash app so we're good there no we're good okay all right everybody i am going i'm out i've got to go and tend to stuff get the podcast done and then tonight at 7 p.m eastern standard time i will be on with that umbrella guy with tug. He has not put up the link yet, but he will shortly. We are going to go over, I think there's some what the hails things he wants to talk about, but also I want to go over the uh, uh, Eckert v. Owens new motion because I hear it's fire. Oh, so, <laughs> so tune in because there's a whole lot more stuff coming on that. It's going to be great. Go do your squats, by the way. Everybody do your squats or your chair yoga. Get moving. I'm going to go do some stretching too. See you guys later. My world is near its end I almost felt my head is full of million choices I am alive, I'm not here to pretend I love my friends, my heart is filled with million voices Oh, this road has many choices Oh, in my heart million voices Come next to me, my friend, embrace the sky I'm not afraid to fly It's not the time to say goodbye storming in there with yeah. a string of garlic and some holy water. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Yeah. May the power yeah. of Christ oh, no, compel you. you. No, I don't. You realized this house was infested with sucky business. <laughs> Of what if, yes. Suck you loaders. No wonder he said, said drown her before you burn <laughs> her. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. Next witness? Now witness I know why you wanted to drown her. Your next witness was in Romania. That's the end of this guy.